our intro. Well, let's start our intro. Hi, everybody. Good nice. morning. <laughs> it's time for a uh, a surprise VRD. We're doing a uh, lightning draft this morning on Discord. Uh, I, of course, am Eric. And I'm Mark. And uh, we we thought last minute, hey, why not bring this draft to the people? You know, so we have something to do on a Saturday, a Sunday morning. It's Sunday, right? Sunday? Yes? Totally. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, great. It, it was one of those uh, Saturday night, we have seven people that say, hey, let's do a draft. And the next morning for Father's Day, we all get a present of a stream. So. <laughs> so it looks like the drafters are getting ready to start. I've actually seen one of the decks already. It looks like, ooh, Mason's starting off with Ancestral Recall. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the oft debated pick between Ancestral Recall and Black Lotus. Ancestral winning out today. It does seem like that is uh, generally the direction things are going. Like it, I've, it seems like ancestrals are winning a lot. Certainly. Yeah, these days people do seem to be picking ancestral much more in the dis these Discord drafts. Uh, we will see if uh, Sam decides to take the the Lotus here or go in a different direction. But uh, Mason solidifying himself, you know, one of the best cards <laughs> ever printed, nice and early. It's true. So wh whose deck have you seen? I I've gotten a sneak peek at the real Pob BC, uh, nice. which we need to come up with a better name right now. <laughs> I've seen Common Opponent's deck. Uh, okay. he, he messaged it to me about a half hour ago, and it looks sweet. Uh, Sam following up with the Black Lotus, and uh, Brandon right in there with the Mana Crypt, uh, ahead of all of the, the, the five Moxon. That seems very reasonable. I mean, assuming that he's going to be doing something with artifacts, this seems fantastic. Common opponent, common of the time, time walk. Yeah, I like that. Um, it also it also fits perfectly into the deck he says he's going to build. So uh, <laughs> it's he literally it's he literally showed me a like Moxfield deck list, not like a spreadsheet, not a pick order, a Moxfield wow. deck list. <laughs> That's so, that's a commitment at that point. Confidence levels are high, and I like it. Um, yeah, real, real, and I talked for about an hour yesterday. Kind of, uh, I, I don't think this is uh, like obviously real's done a draft before. I don't think they're like incredibly experienced in the format. So uh, we, we kind of talked through like here's how you should draft sideboard cards and right. like kind of mapped out how the draft could go. So I, I, have, I have some view into what's happening there, but I think it's a little more open than a Moxfield deck list. Good, good. Steven on the wheel picking up uh, the interesting combo of Ooh. Mox, Pearl, and Raghavan. You gotta assume he was hoping to get that Ruby 8th here if he's looking for that Raghavan, but uh, Pearl will still do him just fine. Yeah, and Talon getting the double Mox is pretty strong there, too. Yeah, that's a... And one of the one of the nice benefits of of being right at the back of that draft order, you may not get a card like Ancestral Recall or Black Lotus, but you are going to get two very very powerful cards back to back right at the beginning of the draft. You can really start to craft your strategy around those. Yeah, what do you think about taking Ragavan over the Emerald? That seems like a pretty big statement pick to me. Yeah, that that tells me that Steven knows exactly the deck he wants to draft. He's got he's got it sure. in mind. He he says if I if I am uh, if I'm eighth pick I want to, or or seventh pick maybe I want to draft this deck and that deck needs Ragavan. Um, that makes sense. Well, okay. I'm taking the Time Vault. That's uh, it's the Sapphire Time Vault. You have to hope that you have to know that he's open for a Tinker on the way back. Yeah, he's he's looking for that Tinker on the way back, and I think uh, I think he might have some people to worry about ahead of him. Uh, <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> There's uh, I, I'm 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 thinking of Brandon in particular, who who might be interested mm -hmm. in that 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 uh, that Tinker already having the Mana Crypt, a popular card to tinker away in the troubled times. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, when you take your infinite turns, Mana Crypt is uh, is exactly the card you want to tinker away. Yeah, exactly. As someone who's played both Mana Crypt and uh, in Time Vault combo in the same deck before, it's important. You don't want to you don't want to bolt yourself to death with coin flips. It's bad. I have actually killed myself that way. Uh, I was like, all right, there's a pretty good chance that I get three more turns is all I need to win. Right. Uh, but I have no way to get rid of the script. The best. I just need to not lose every flip. And oh, oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> So com common with such a strong deck, you, you would think that the pick two would be pretty locked up at this point. You might think that. However, it seems like we're uh, we're having a little bit of a think on this one. 
Um, Reasonable. You know, there's. Oh, hey there, Meta. Oh yeah, happy Happy Father's Day. As as a as a non father myself, I, I I respect all the the rad dads out there. I have a new daughter coming in three days, so that'll be a that'll be a second <laughs> father for me. Uh, that was luckily. <laughs> Shout out, shout out to Sonic the Hedgehog for, for watching my kid right now. <laughs> Thanks, Sonic the Hedgehog. You're doing a great job. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Eggman, as my as child likes to call him, is, uh, is his favorite character on there. Oh, nice. Well, that's a, that's, that's a, a solid pick. Mox Diamond, <laughs> also a solid pick for common, Ooh. followed by Vampiric Tutor out of real... So it looks like we're, uh, <laughs> we're, <laughs> I don't have room for you in my apartment, Meta. <laughs> is there an actual uh, timer on the lightning round? There is not. This is just, what lightning draft means is just basically, instead of doing an asynchronous draft, which is what we often do on the Discord, um, lightning draft just means we, we do it live, so... Uh, the, the, the only real timer might be other people in Discord chat uh, telling you to hurry up in a, in a friendly but obnoxious way. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, every person is in a Discord chat, which in hindsight we probably should have recorded. Uh, that would be a cool thing for the next one is to have that as an alternate view of the stream, but yes. we can talk about that later. Yeah, uh, yeah all, all eight of them are in this draft, or in, the, in there. We have Brandon going harder into the artifact mana, hoping to get the Karn probably in round three or four. Uh, Common with the Time Vault into Mox Diamond makes me think that there's some Planeswalker shenanigans happening. Very well could be. Very well could be. I, I like the, uh, I like the, I like that. I like the Mana Crypt Soul Ring out of Brandon. I think that's a, a fantastic way to get started with some some colorless mana. Maybe maybe cast some Eldrazi a little later down the pipeline, or just cast some Ooh. some big artifacts. Mm-hmm. Fast bond and a strip mine off of the yes. lotus. This can be a wild. Yes. Oh, Sam building something very nasty here with lotus fast bond and strip mine. <laughs> you you know there's going to be a crucible and ramming app coming down the pipe for her. Oh yeah, you know and uh, and and having having seen uh, having seen Mox Diamond already go, I wonder wonder if she's uh, she's missing that or if she's got other plans. Totally. Yeah, Merfolk is my first thought too, as well. Meta, when we look at we look at Mason's list, mm. uh, I think. Oh, oh, you're talking about my my play of Merfolk. Yeah, pulling a seven zero with that was pretty incredible. Um, but yeah, when I see Mason, like that's exactly. I don't know if I'd put Snapcaster that early in the list, like over Force of Negation. But I don't know why Mason prioritized Snapcaster there. I think we'll find out probably. I think I think that uh, Ancestral Recall Snapcaster Mage is probably the uh, the core of the plan right now, and we'll figure out the rest later. Um, That's fair. Brandon picking up Oko, real following up with Thoughtseize. A lot of nice traditional black cards here, looking to corner the market on some of those those low cost, high power black cards. Common picks up the Delta and starts off the Fetchland Madness, but uh, Master Plum staying true to their plan with Demonic Tutor here. Ooh, okay. So we have Vampiric ahead of Demonic. That's interesting. We actually talked about that. I think Vampiric's substantially better in most decks. Like, obviously, sometimes Demonic's better. Um, but Demonic kind of requires you to be able to answer the first shot before you can uh, be before you can deploy your plan, right? Because Demonic's obviously a turn slower, at yep. least. Um, and with Tempo, it can often be two turns slower. Yeah, Demonic Tutor, you know, it... it... It seems like this this much better card in a vacuum because they're like, well, you know, it's not this unrestricted tutor, but I, I can just draw the card. I can have the card right now. I, I can enjoy my card. Mm -hmm. And Vampir vampiric tutor at instant speed, it's it's really about the same, you know, the same thing power wise. And you just you, you cast at the end of your opponent's turn. You you draw your card and you do your thing and you win the game. Oh, this is wild. Okay, so Tinker went past Plum. He didn't want it. Uh, wow. So Talon, Talon got the Tinker and the two, Mystical Tutor. Steven sniping the Karn the Great Creator away from Brandon, who I assume is not very happy after taking Oko. <laughs> Oof. This is uh, a lot of lot of infighting already in this draft this morning. That's what we yeah. want to see. People, people jumping into each other's lanes, taking each other's cards. It's much more interesting than if everybody just drafts on down the line. Absolutely, yes. Uh, Manager, it's a good pickup. 
Stoneforge Mystic is interesting this early. Is that as early as it normally goes? Uh, let's check it out. Let's take a look at the uh, the Lotus score in the average draft round here. Yeah, because I think I think that's usually a later pick. But I, I mean, Stephen does his homework, so I would know. I I would bet on him that he's thought about this. So in the forty-seven drafts where it's been picked, it's gone in, on average in round fifteen. My guess is that it's started to creep up in recent drafts. I uh, I don't have the resources to go check that uh, in a robust way right now, but I have seen it getting picked higher than ten. I in recent memory, I think so. It doesn't surprise sure, me that to see Stephen creeping it up and uh, making a statement about what he thinks is right. I'm um, going for the second uh, fetch, which is a great pick. Um, meta Imperial Seals sometimes drafted. I would say it's probably like somewhere between a third and half the time it gets drafted, but it's substantially worse than either of the other two tutors. Yeah, sorcery speed really puts a damper on it. Uh, it looks like it does get drafted quite a lot. Oh actually. wow! More often That's... than we remember. Yeah, that definitely feels like it's a historical artifact as opposed to something that is uh, correct at this point. But yeah. again, what do we know? There's such a small sample size. Sam picking up the best fetch land, Prismatic Vista. Um, and uh, Brandon seems to have recovered from the loss of Karn. He's got Teferi. Uh, he should be okay. Looking for uh, some kind of Planeswalker nonsense here. Reels list is staying true to the low, low cost uh, black cards so far. And there's the Force of Negation. Oh, nice. In round four, it feels a little late, but I don't, I don't, I don't really know the answer to that. I'm just so used to seeing Force Force. Yeah. Force. Okay, so DC Sports. The the Stoneforge doesn't often really grab swords at any point. Um, like, sometimes you'll see one sword out of the board, uh, but usually it's not in the main deck even. Uh, most of the time, uh, the Stoneforge will end up grabbing, grabbing either Culture Complete or it will grab Batter Skull. Uh, those are kind of the two main things. And then oftentimes you'll run Jitte in the same deck, just because it's incredible. Um, but the vast majority of the time... Uh, it, it's just grabbing one of those two pieces and it doesn't care that much which one it is. It, it's kind of a question of whether the field's more aggro or more combo, which are the two you want usually. And on a similar note, it's it's rare to see too much equipment in really any decks that aren't the Stoneforge deck. I, I think we occasionally see something like a Skull Clamp floating around in another deck, but that does that even that frequently ends up with the Stoneforge. Correct. Sometimes you'll see a tribal deck that plays Jitte. But yeah, like the vast majority of the time, it's it's not. Poor equipment. There's aren't enough creature decks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, an equipment like often will shine again in decks. Like maybe a grafted war gear could show up in a in some kind of shenanigans deck, but you end up with like if you have an equipment, it's there for a very specific reason as opposed to just being value. I'd love to see grafted war gear in uh, in an infect deck, though. I I know there's probably better better cards to put in there couple of fetch lands picked up here. We've got our, our fetch land highlighting technology thanks to, I think it was, that was a hyphenated implementation if I recall. Um, so thank you to hyphen for that. Uh, and an inquisition for uh, for real. And just just holding on to that discard for dear life. Mm -hmm. Dak Faden in pick yeah, five? What Dak is happening? Faden. Wow. Oh my God. So Dak Faden usually goes about five or six rounds later than this, but uh, common opponent must have must have some very specific uses in mind for Dak Faden. I wonder what they could be. Well, and this field is looking very good. There's like four different artifact decks that are floating around. Like Steven definitely is an artifact deck. Yeah. Talon is playing Tinker. <laughs> we have uh, we have a Time Vault deck next to him. We have uh, Brandon with Mana Crypt Soul Ring. Like, there's a whole bunch of good artifact decks floating around. I think Brandon's probably going to be not a full dedicated one, but the other three easily could be. Absolutely. Steven, yes. Okay, Steven picks up Thalia, Guardian of Throbin, and, and, and is committing to, to just putting the hate out there. Let's see how early Thalia goes. Yes, I did. I did, St. Lotus website. Yeah, this is a, this is a pretty early Thalia here. That's exciting. It is. I and like Solitude? This. Solitude ahead of Swords? Ooh. This means Blink, right? Yeah, I think this means Blink. What does the data say about Urza's Saga? It's over 9,000. <laughs> and uh, you can check all the data for yourself. Eric's just pulling data up on stlotus.org, so uh, go ahead and hit that up if you want to see the data for yourself. 
that said, I, I I do take requests when when I have. Time. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I definitely love to like talk about it in chat too. But just in case in case there's any weird stuff, like I don't know if we're gonna be playing a mountain goat on stream today. But saga saga started uh, out lower, I think lower than round nine, and and then just really really rose up very fast once people realized, wait, yeah, this card really is that good. It finds half of time vault, right? Yeah. Like it's it, it, that alone. It should push it up into the top fifteen. Yeah, I think it's it's a fantastic card. I, I do. Uh, going back to what you said earlier, DC, I do like the uh, the Thopter Sword combo mention. I actually uh, I actually came up against the Sword of the Meek uh, the other day in a uh, in a VRD game um, and got got beat up pretty good by it. It turns out. Uh, you know, dumping into the graveyard with Emery and then bringing it back with Psymaster Thopterus triggers was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's what uh, the second place in the St. Louis Presents played. Uh, it was a time sieve combo deck. Oh my gosh, that was so cool. Yes. Yeah, I mean, we had a chance of having 6-0 versus 6-0 in the finals, and it didn't quite have a, end up getting there, but yeah, we had 5-1 versus 6-0 uh, in the finals with time sieve being on there. Common with a good read coming back right before Reels pick picks up that Lily out of the veil and says, uh, "You can't have this one. I'm going to take this piece of discard." But Reels ready with that Sylvan Library moving into green black here potentially. Uh huh. That's yeah. Taking that Lily out of this early is pretty wild. We have we have a few Walker stacks. It seems like again we kind of talked about the rise of the Walkers over this over 2022 or 2021, I think, and. Liliana is not one that normally makes it even into the top ten. I should just no. pull up, right? Yeah, Liliana. she's uh, she's normally far lower. Yeah, round round sixteen, and uh, some of that is is historical data, of course. At some point, I you know I I need to get some of my data, the data that I have out there about a a, a more recent subset of drafts that that might might, but uh, but I like that we have this historical data. It tells us a lot about how the format has changed over the years, which is really cool. Ooh. Yeah, my like project uh, when when I'm on parental leave is going to be to try to make a little graph that shows historically um, how long it's been drafted over time. So when you see like if it has a right leaning distribution, it would mean that it had a lot of uh, a lot of picks recently, but not a lot in the past. Like I think that would be an interesting kind of just like let's see how this card has been done recently. It looks like Mason is trying to get into the artifact business, picking up Urza Saga what? and Mox Opal. <laughs> Why would you enter that lane when there are three other players dedicated? I look forward to asking Mason about this at some point because I have no idea. That's exciting. Especially with like Lotus not you don't have Lotus either. Like there's yeah. obviously these cards are great, right? It's not like you're drafting bad cards, but it's kind of just this is a this is a pivot. This is a hard stance here. Oh yeah, this is this this means something. This means Mason says there's something there. There's a subset of artifacts that other people are just not going to draft based on what they've drafted so far, and yep. in the next five or six picks, I'm going to go get all the ones I need. Um, what they yeah. are, I have no my idea. My first thought is Emery. Yeah, my first guess is Emery, but yeah, like maybe, maybe it's that Urza hasn't been taken yet. That could be a reason. Uh, Urza Lord High Artificer. But no, yeah. I mean, Mason knows more about this format than probably anybody else. So, like, I'm not doubting that this is the correct choice. It's more just, it's surprising to me. Oh, yeah. No, like I said, I, I, I look forward to seeing what Mason drafts because uh, there's 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 a plan in place here. Could be, yeah, Emery and Bobbles. I like that a lot. That's a solid, Same. solid thought. I think the Bobbles uh, in the artifact decks do go a little bit underappreciated by the folks that we, uh, that, that we, that we play with. Although, although I did get... I did get bobbled pretty good by Swifty uh, yesterday. Yesterday? Yesterday. Um, uh, when Swifty was playing that uh, that Paradoxical Outcome deck. Totally. But it's kind of like in that world, it seems like you'd really want to be on the Incinerian Bridge plan and then have Karn, right? Like it's, you, I don't know. There's just, there's a lot of reasons why uh, I totally can see a way that deck comes together still, but yeah. damn with Wheel of Fortune after the loot tree. Mm. <laughs> or, does that mean Narset's coming back on the wheel, hopefully? I mean, it's incredible to see just how far Narset has fallen in this draft, actually. True. I guess Sam is not committed to blue by any means, so probably not, now that I'm looking at it. That looks like a red-green deck to me. 
Yeah, very much so. So Narset is interesting. Narset has been picked in every draft where it's been available for, for to draft, and it's usually taken by round four. This is uh... <laughs> a late hull breacher too. Brandon sees the wheel and says, I'll take this hull breacher. Thanks very much. It's definitely a late hull breacher. Yeah, that's a round five card. Ooh. Very nice. Once upon a time. That card's fantastic. This is this is shaping up. Once upon a time is a card when you look at the stats, goes like pick 14 or something, and sometimes it gets forgotten. But it's incredible. It's just like it's absolutely better than what it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 just it's just busted. It's <laughs> it truly is. It's the card that I feel like if I had to pick one VRD that I'm just like, people don't appreciate this card enough in this format, it would be this one. Yes. Almond with the Lotus Petal, trying to pressure out that Dak Vaden and Liliana. Yep, and uh, and reading the room a little bit here, seeing cards like uh, like Urza's Saga going away, knowing that a lot of these these this fast free mana is uh, is off the table, and people people do love that stuff. Yep, got, that's true. We've got seven fetch lands yep. down, three to go. Plum kind of uh, making that jump, like committing to demonic tutor and mana drain is a big, a big stance, right? Yes. Uh, this is a this is a big a big Demir deck. Yeah, we're gonna have to see uh, some some hopefully fetchable Demir duels out of out of Plum here, picking up the counter spell to go along with the drain and Talon with a uh, uh, is that a late mana vault? Mana vault always that seems late to me. Yeah, the tomb the tomb feels about on time, but that mana vault feels late to me. Mana vault usually. In a oh, and there's the cauldron right? complete. Ooh, yep. Yeah, Steven says I'm going to be needing this ancient tomb for something. Who can say? Really? No, Steven needs an ancient tomb. <laughs> an ancient ancient tomb. Uh, I'm sure that'll be great at casting Thoitnoit's ear uh, or whatever <laughs> else he has on deck here. Culture complete this early is, is it feels strange, right? Who else is going to be fighting over that card? Yeah, that's a great question. Maybe I Brandon. I think I think Brandon is the big worry with the mana crypt and the soul ring. Uh, Brandon being a little bit of a wild card, it's uh, it, it's hard to know what what Brandon will draft and when. Uh, all all you really know is at the end you're going to be surprised by how effective Brandon's deck actually is. Uh, every time, every single time. <laughs> Brandon is one of those that, like, I feel like I could hand him a, a stack of 40 random cards and he would beat me in an average game. It's just, yep. like, his play his play, and, like, the amount of carrying he puts into a game once he's in it is ridiculous. Um, so, like, obviously he's a skilled drafter, but he also just, like, completely destroys people by playing better than them. Oh, yeah. I've uh, I've, I've been on the receiving end of some, some serious Brandon beatdowns in my time. <laughs> yep. Oh, okay, there's Hull Breacher and a Time Twister. Uh, real just kind of sticking with the the black bitter blossom. That's an interesting one that we sometimes goes undrafted actually, but I think is probably far better than um, than people give it credit for. Yeah, bitter blossom is one of those cards that is is that that kind of like cascading engine of pressure, right? And having a card that just does that all on its own is so powerful. And as long as you back it up with a couple of other threats, you get that clock going pretty quickly. Show and tell for Sam. Interesting. <laughs> are we gonna are we looking at some sort of team or sneak and show nonsense here are we gonna start seeing cards like through the breach <laughs> wait wait Wild. wait i do not understand mason's list right now at all but <laughs> i am excited to see what happens mason picking up what i'm guessing is Telerian academy and urza back to back here that makes sense but at some point he'll need to like Draft an artifact, right? Besides Mox Opal. Yeah, I mean, you know, metal, <laughs> metal craft, metal craft, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Who even cares? Sam pivoting into into blue here is interesting. I, I mean, I imagine this goes along with a sneak attack, like you said, right? But uh, blue feels like a hard spot at this table. Yeah, I, I think, I, I think it's going to be tough to get all of the mana for this deck between the fact that we're already playing a strip mine we've we've committed to oh huh? <laughs> what oh my god this is this is galaxy brain stuff happening right here okay this is this is uh you know 
Mason's just going to win the draft with whatever this is. I don't know what it is, and I might not know for another hour or two, but uh, City of Traders here. And uh, Sam picks up Wasteland to go with that fast bond strip mine. Solid. Yeah. W Wasteland is also another card that's kind of fallen off a lot um, in recent... Like, if we saw the graph, it would just be, like, crashing to the floor at the moment. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's really... It, it, it's, it's got a lot of old uh, old drafts where it's been... Went really high, and it's... It, it We had a... Was it VRD St. Lotus 7 where it just went undrafted? Was that the one? That sounds right. Yeah, I mean, it's only okay, right? Yeah. Oh, sports sports brings up a good call, which is is this eight cast. I think more likely this is a Ravager deck. Just looking at what's happening here, I think yeah. this is a I think this is the artifact uh, aggro deck that Common and I have been talking about a bunch. Yeah, it could be. Common could actually be has an artifact deck. an article on deck. Yeah. We, we could see we could see cards like Kappa Cannoneer coming out of here as well. Um, mm -hmm. Brandon picking up the Urza says, uh, "I don't know what you're doing over there, Mason, but you can't have this Urza." Little does he know. <laughs> And uh, Real picks up the Skull Clamp to go with that Bitter Blossom. I like it. A nice card advantage engine here. Mm -hmm. But when I look at Mason's list, that, that's something that actually all these picks make sense for. If I'm doing a Ravager aggro deck that's yeah. just playing uh, whatever that stupid two-mana tap to put a counter on everything is guy, oh. like th this list lines up for that. Yeah, we're, 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 we're looking at... Uh, Mason's artifacts are going to mostly be the artifact creatures that other people don't care about, which makes sense why he's drafting cards like Telerian Academy, Urza Saga up top. Doesn't care about drafting the smaller artifacts now because he doesn't need them. He's going to take a bunch of crap that right. nobody else cares about, but yeah, when he plays Steel Overseer and Etched Champion and, uh, you know, mere, mere garbage friend, whatever, whatever it ends <laughs> up being... Like, it just doesn't matter what the cards are. Nobody else wants them. It's true. Yeah, I, I'm excited to see some, uh, some like, everyone else is taking walkers in around two and three, and Mason's just going to be playing a two mana, two, 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 that turns them all off. Yep. I'm, uh, I'm excited. Two mana pith and needle that beats you down. I, I love playing, uh, I, these days, I'm trying really hard to play more aggressive decks in this format, whether that means Same. an aggressive combo deck or a deck that attacks with creatures, uh, because I think being proactive is so much so much better than being reactive in this format. And uh, the terrible deck I drafted in the, uh, the most recent uh, async that I did bears that out. Yeah, it is It is kind of wild how much creatures have moved up for me. Just the, yeah. the ability to... Put pressure on opponents' life totals is very strong. One, one Hello, Ju Chems. Welcome. Oh, hey, good morning. One interesting note here Who is are... that uh, I think we still have room for a potential uh, Thassa's Oracle deck in this draft. I think uh, I think that might be what we're going to see out of Plum here. It's uh, it's possible they've got the one tutor. Um, and some 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 weird stuff like, going on. Having time vault already makes that a little weird and kind of gets you into a little bit of the uh, um, the what's the the game where you move the, the cards two, around the two card uh, Monty plan. Yes, there we go. Yeah, it feels a little like three card Monty to me. Um, but I mean, time vault is pretty good. The problem is like you can't really bail on time vault after taking it that early. Maybe you can. Maybe you I, just like don't yeah. worry about it. Yeah, maybe you do. Maybe you just you know you, you cut your losses and you say, all right, well we're 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 gonna take our our cards and we're just gonna do something else entirely. Nobody else seems to care about demonic consultation and Thassa's Oracle, so maybe we'll pick them up in an hour or so. Totally. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because Time Vault with, without without Tinker, without like all the other things, you're just playing two different artifacts that have no synergies with the rest of your deck. You can't really yep. do that. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like uh, Common's counter picks are starting to <laughs> starting to ruffle some feathers. I like it. Uh, the underground sea here, in particular, being a, a solid solid card to take away from from Plum. Yeah, absolutely. Steven. Yeah, I think I think volcanic. Yeah, volcanic being gone and underground sea being gone. Are you seeing any other of the of the true duels gone yet? I don't think so. My eyes are not finding yeah. any of the other true duels yet. Um, Pyro and Reb going wow. nice and early. Those cards have just been going up and up recently. 
Yeah, it's a little strange to me, actually. Like, I mean, given this field, it makes sense, right? But in most fields, it's kind of like, I don't know, it, they're they're fine. They don't end the game in the same way that Veil of Summer does. And right. that's a card that I would expect to see much earlier. I think that, uh, I think we've had a lot more red drafters than green drafters recently has been part of it. Um, mm, so the competition for these has been higher. <laughs> Whoa! Reality Smasher gets sniped? Brandon says, get out of here, Steven. This is my lane. <laughs> <laughs> Picks up the reality smasher to go with the mana crypt and soul ring. Oh, I love it. Oh, this is great. Are we going to see? I guess wastes are free, right? We don't. Assuming we're playing by Saint Lotus rules, so you get one. You get as many wastes as you want for right. free. So if uh, if Brandon needs any wastes, he's he's more than welcome to them. Uh, he he. <laughs> hopefully for him, he doesn't need them. Uh, you know, may may I humbly suggest he pick up some pain lands in the forties. Uh, Not that you're invested at all. No, we 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 here at the Painland Council are are free of conflicts of interest. Um, Mystical Tutor, unfortunately, already gone. But that's okay. Oh, Chems right points out that Stephen apparently sideboarded the Time Vault and did not play it. That also happened at the Saint Lotus Presents. Uh, yeah. The player that drafted Time Vault did not play it in the main deck. Yeah, I mean. Like, honestly, it's very easy to to get fixated on a card like Time Vault early and make a bunch of suboptimal picks. Uh, I wouldn't yep. know anything about that. Uh, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's something that I think Mason actually did very well. Mason uh, drafts, just used to, I think it has changed, obviously, but used to just always draft the Thought Seas and Inquisition in rounds one and two, yep. or rounds two and three, and then would just bail on them and just be like, I'm going to draft Elves instead. And right. Like, not necessarily play the cards at all. Yeah, I think Mason has gotten very... Like, who who was already quite good has gotten even better at just, like, just just taking what's open. He's, yep. he's got that, that notebook full of uh, wild ideas and... You know, you, there's it, it. It it turns out if you if you if you flip the pages enough, you'll find the right deck for whatever draft you're in. I think I, I don't I don't really know how it works. I think it's magical. Yeah, it's like it's a combination of the Book of Rhymes from Nas and the Room of Requirement from Harry Potter. <laughs> I love Sam's deck right now. Like oh, having that's... Wasteland strip mine and and then presumably she's gonna have three different ways to recur them yeah. it, with fast. <laughs> like she's gonna she's gonna blow up some mana bases. Those are gonna be some gnarly games. I'm I, I wish we could watch all these games because that's gonna be awesome. Yeah. I mean I, I don't I don't know. Crucible Yeah, oh my god, I just Okay, what's gonna happen? Is this gonna be uh turn one Black Lotus Crucible strip mine and then turn two fast bond? Oh. just Okay. Just you get one mana. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, fastbound or black lotus to rush out the crucible and then just strip my luck. Oh, that's gonna be nasty. I cannot wait. Mason picking up the five uh -huh. color lands here. Both of the the, <laughs> the the top tier five color lands. Let's see. I keep being like, okay, I can like see what he's doing and come up with a plan, and then it's completely blown up by the next two picks. Well, I, I mean, I think that artifact aggro deck needs a surprising amount of uh, actual colored mana a lot of the time. Um, you know, does it really? I, different colored mana. It, it depends a lot of. I mean, I've seen those artifact mana decks like draft and intentionally play Glimmer Void before, and okay, why not? Why not draft better cards? That, uh, that that don't go away if your opponent actually destroys all your artifacts. Yeah, the Shatterstorm effect is real. That's fair, I guess. So are we thinking that this is going to be like a Shrapnel Blast and like kind of just Thought Cast Shrapnel Blast? Um, I don't know. There's probably other cards that are good. Yeah, I mean, we might... Aether Vial is a card that I expect to see out of him very soon. Certainly. We might see uh, Shrapnel Blast, Galvanic Blast, you know, cards like in, in Soul Artifact could show up. Really weird stuff, but... Uh, but I, I think we'll see blue mana, red mana, potentially some some like the occasional white card getting cast. Uh, but but I think that uh, Mason is looking to to actually cast some of those instants and sorceries once in a while. Mm -hmm. Makes oh, sense. Nissa, what a card! I like I like Nissa. Asper Sentinel. Esper Sentinel, fantastic. Wow, Br Brandon, 
<laughs> Brandon's just like fighting with Steven from across the table, and I didn't realize. Yeah. I don't think Steven knew either because Brandon is over here drafting this like Planeswalker deck with Hull Breacher and Time Twister. And then Brandon goes goes off and drafts Urza Lord High Artificer and suddenly just wants, I don't know, wants something else. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I figured, okay, this is going to be the Bant, the Bant Walkers list that he won, what was it, St. Lotus 6 with? Seven, um, yeah. Seven, yeah, where he won, where he won the tournament. Not that you remember those rounds very closely at all. I, uh, but I no. have no memory of that. <laughs> Instead, he decided to smash together the two finals decks uh, from St. Lotus 7 into this Reality Smasher Bant <laughs> yeah. Walker deck. The, the, the finals are being completed by Reality Smasher <laughs> here. I love it. Oh, that's great. Ignoble Common, Common has... Like that. Common seems like he's drafting uh, just Grixis Control from Vintage. Like, this looks like a Gr Grixis Control list. It sure looks like it, doesn't it? We've got some some very powerful control pieces. We've got that Lightning Bolt to to take out some of the creatures. I, I, I have... Common draft has now drafted the Miser's Lightning Bolt a couple of times. I, it, it doesn't look <laughs> like he intends to go into full burn mode. Uh, but I do no. like it just as a card that... that, that takes care of business you know there's a there's there's plenty of small creatures and planeswalkers that just need to be eliminated and smuggler's copter smuggler's oh. copter no creatures not to give away the farm but reels can be very annoyed about that pick <laughs> oh no oh that's exciting uh master plum picking up narset uh parter of veils uh I'd have i'm assuming common's gonna draft cast at some point here as, as well oh. I'd love to see that. I, I, I remember VRD 2, St. Lotus 2, I think I played against Kess. Elaine was playing. Yeah, Kess that was that Elaine. Day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Yeah, that, I think that was her, was that her double, uh, double, what's the big dragon? Nickel Bolas, double Nickel Bolas deck? Yes, yes, it was the double Bolas deck. That was a sweet deck. So Steven, if you're in Steven's spot, I guess you just start pivoting more towards the white creatures yeah. and maybe bail on this uh, Thought Not Seer plan. I don't know. Uh, you, you could. I mean, he doesn't he doesn't have to, right? Like he, he's got he's got an ancient tomb and he'll be able to pick up a couple of pain lands or other ways to produce, uh, you know, uh, colorless mana at low cost to himself. But losing Reality Smasher really hurts. It means that yeah. you're... You're slightly less excited to draft cards like Eldrazi Mimic and uh, in in the 30s and 40s, but mm -hmm. picking up uh, Swords to Plowshares to go along with that Skyclave Apparition, I, I think pivoting into just like White Hate Bears and and their friends is a pretty reasonable plan. Picking Swords over a Solitude was interesting to me. It feels like if I would reverse those two picks, um, mm -hmm. the only reason I could think not to is if somebody else was. Yeah, I actually don't know why you'd want Solitude earlier. Um, it, it feels like Swords is a card that's more easily splashable, and therefore somebody could grab it. Uh, whereas Solitude, I don't know how. I don't know somebody who would want Solitude that wouldn't want Swords. Yeah, it is a little surprising to see that. Um, I wonder. I wonder what the reasoning for that is. Swords obviously going 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 around now ish. Solitude. Uh, going quite a bit later, generally round twenty-three. Usually, obviously, I think that's that's probably a little low, but uh, but we'll see see how that how that changes over the next you know ten or twenty drafts, a couple of years here. This could also just be like Steven sees that uh, the only person competing is Brandon, and Brandon uh, he just wants to like snipe Solitude because he thinks Brandon's more likely to grab that card in the dark, like knowing yeah. Brandon's love for spicy mix. I think Brandon is also less likely to pick up too much more white, um, just because we're we're now playing effectively four colors here, right? We're we're bant and colorless. Uh, if yep. Brandon really does want to play that reality smasher, and that's tough. Yeah, it is, and presumably the the colorless is mostly off of the back of those artifacts, but yep. we'll see. It could be the pain lands all to start going in the, in the 15s. Oh yeah, no, let's do it. Let's move them up. Uh, Master Plum really setting up for something here. We've got Jace, Brainstorm, Ponder, Preordain, just hammering on the, you know, Narset, just, just going hard on card draw. 
I really think we could be seeing a pivot toward toward a card like Demonic Consultation very soon here. Yeah, I think that's that's the right call. I, I don't know. I don't know at all. Right? Like it could easily also just be okay. I'm gonna bail on this Time Vault Demonic Tutor, and I'm just going to do a mono blue kind of control list. Sure. Uh, or it could go into Merfolk, right? Maybe go after my own heart. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I, th I think that is the the direction I would go. Now, given that you already have the tutor, um, right? And really good mana fix. Like Plum missed out on the uh, on the Underground Sea, so needs to figure out like Watery Grave at some point here fast. But other than that, everything seems great. Now Watery Grave usually going uh, uh, a few pick a few rounds later, but common opponent. Signaling an early desire to take that mana fixing, picking up the steam vents to go with the polluted delta and sculling, sculling tarn that he's already picked up. So we might see watery grave uh, not arrive at master plum by the time things come back around. Although common does have the C, so that might not be necessary. Yeah, I, I mean I think you could, but I don't think you need it, right? Given that you already have your full like Grixis mana base figured out. Um, I think four four lands is is pretty good. Like I think somewhere between four and seven is probably the right number at the end of the day. But I was we'll see. I was really excited to talk about Gta out of Reels deck here with the uh, the Skull Clamp and the Douthy Voidwalker. But then Emrakul the Aeon's Torn got picked, and I forgot all about Gta. <laughs> oh yeah, we we're solidly in a sneak and show deck, sneak and show with Red and Six deck right now. Well, we're also we're also a big mana deck with the with the Nissa, right? Like we can we can. We can play a, a bunch of forests and uh, and just tap them for mana and cast Emrakul. We might even see a channel out of Sam here. Oh, I like channel a lot there. Because I was going to say, like, even big okay. mana can't cast 15 mana spells usually. Like I have to reset that's, my that's a big ask. mixer because it bugged out. And Mark sounds like a robot now. Uh, we're going to be about five seconds without audio. <laughs> Testing one two, and we're back with audio. Yay! Tell us again what you're um, yeah, telling you, us. I was gonna say Emrakul. If for big mana decks, even big mana decks have trouble with fifteen mana. <laughs> yeah, it's um, a lot. so like getting getting to twelve and then lucky drawing your black lotus is, is a bit of a dream. Okay. Guy is crazy. Okay. I mean, yeah. If you're gonna if you're gonna spew off like. Cards with affinity and zero, like Memnite and, and guys cradle, I guess. <laughs> okay, so so I think that's still the most likely option. Yeah. Now my heart hopes that this is a uh, this is a, becomes what is that stupid deck? Enduring ideal is that the one or renewing? What's the the shield spear deck? From Legacy way back in the day. Oh, oh, oh. Shield, oh, oh. Shield Sphere. Uh, Cheerios. Cheerios. Could this be yeah, a Cheerios yeah. list? Oh, I'd love a Cheerios list. That would be a delight. I, I don't think it's likely, but it would be very funny. I think it's very hard to draft that in this format because the, the, it's... There's, I mean, there's more zeros every day, I guess, because a new card gets printed every five minutes. But, uh... <laughs> yeah. Ooh, I like that balance, and I like that Veil of Summer. Those are both great picks here. Brandon is our one of our premier balance appreciators. Is this when does balance even get drafted? No one really knows. It's wild. It's, yeah. It gets taken in the third round or the fortieth round. It's completely <laughs> and, and I think a lot of that is that white doesn't usually get fought over. Is that there's one white draft at the table sometimes too? Right. So a lot of a lot of balances uh, diversity there is just because like. People, number one, don't appreciate it because it doesn't get played in EDH. And number two, you don't have a lot of competition for white. I love seeing Veil of Summer show up here. Uh, I guess we are yep. I guess we are close to the, the average draft round for Veil, but gosh, it's such a good card. It is. But now, the card that I didn't talk to Real about, and I don't know how deep he is on other formats, is Seed Time is my favorite green sideboard card. Ooh, I love Seed Time. Yeah. I don't, I don't think it'll happen, but I... I I have deep hopes. We've got. I mean, it's got. It's got that fantastic art. It's got that. That yeah. those those good take an extra turn words on it. Everybody loves it. It also but, just triggers every game somehow. Like it's impossible for it not to happen. Yeah, it's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> you can't draft us, Brandon. That's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. Oh God, channel. That's great! Whoa! 
Talon taking channel. <gasps> Wait, maybe? What? Huh? What? what is, something weird is happening. Uh, yeah, okay, no, we're back. We're back with channel. Uh, Ledger okay. Shredder for, for Plum, which I really like. Mm -hmm. And uh, Steven picks up a backup artifact for, for Stoneforge, Batterskull, along with uh, starting the Hate Bear train with Containment Priest. And Talon's got an oath! Oh, has to be so bad about that ember cool though oh i bet i bet well, we got tinker blight steel we, i think we missed the blight steel somehow but tinker blight steel and now channel it with the druids oh my gosh we're gonna see we're gonna see some other big uh big man of nonsense out of talon potentially here i mean it's interesting because you want it with an oath package right you want to limit your your big creatures to stuff that's really just going to win the game but if you're actually going to cast channel, you need to increase the frequency with which you'll be able to pair that with a large spell that wins the game. So those two plans are actually slightly at odds, which I find interesting. Are you saying because the, some of the best ways to get the channel uh, channel paired up with something is via creatures? Uh, off, oftentimes, yeah, in this format. Although I suppose Emrakul is gone. Um, but, but uh, yeah, I... You know, channel channel is not actually infinite mana, so you really want to stick a large threat and make something happen. I wonder if we'll see Talon try to cast something like uh, grab something like Omniscience away from Sam here. Ooh, interesting. Collective brutality, common and common and real, kind of sitting there fighting back and forth here. It seems yeah. like common is just picking up some of the stuff that uh, that he knows real is is looking for here. I think. Uh, says, well, here's here's where the overlap lies. I'm going to go ahead and grab these cards now, preferentially. And that's that's a really hard line to walk when you're drafting literally in the seat next to someone. Oh, for sure. I do think that's kind of the, that's the skill of this format, though, right? That's that's when you see people that really know what's going on. Is they have a list, it has all the pick orders. Instead of just taking the cards that are historically drafted in the right spot, uh, you say. At this table, this card, even though it's normally pick twenty-five, I need to take and pick fifteen. Like, and that's that's I think why this format will never hold is because that is incredibly hard to do. Right? It's just very hard to know what people are on. Try to predict where your overlaps lie, and then bump things in surprising ways where you might take something like a, a Talarian Academy and pick eight because 100%. you know the other people at the table are going to be taking it. I love it. It's the best. Luris, Luris interesting. Now are we see. on a everything fits i was gonna say i'm rolling my eyes over this list and uh, as, uh -huh. as i pass over it, it, everything's everything's good we're luris legal now luris luris is fine in the main deck don't get me wrong but uh it'd be nice to see luris in the in the companion zone here i have not i mean the list that we were looking at did not have luris the companion zone but yeah. this list so far might that'd be very cool I mean, once once you lose that Liliana to common, at some point you just say, "Well, you know what? Let's <laughs> let's make it work." Once yeah, let me look is... at the rest of the list and see. Okay, there, there's still some stuff on here that it, it was very exciting that is that is outside of that range. So I don't think so, but we'll see. We will find out. Brandon picking up Grim Monolith Crucible Worlds finally falling Ooh. into Sam's list here. That's a late Monolith, right? Yeah, it's a it's quite a late monolith actually. Let's take a look. I think that's usually like ten ish. Six, dang. Yeah. Mason picking up either sworn canonist. All right, is this five color humans artifact humans? I don't know what's happening. I. I mean. I don't. I don't know. I don't know, Mark. I understand the rest of the decks at the table so far. This one I do not understand. Like Plum picking I just, up I the just love... Shredder and the Jace. I get that. That's fine. Oh, yeah. What is this? Nobody on Reanimator either that I'm seeing. No. Uh, which is, I mean, Plum could be going that direction with the, the Demonic Tutor. I think more likely than the, uh, than the combo angle at this point is Reanimator there. Very well could be. We've got the Ledger Shredder and the Jace Friends Prodigy to put cards in the graveyard here, so that does speak to the possibility mm -hmm. of Reanimator. Um, but I do like that uh, if that is Plum's plan, or at least backup plan after getting potentially pushed out of the Vault deck, uh, that they've they've just said, you know what, 
I'm gonna tra- I'm just gonna draft all these good cards. I'm gonna figure out how to win later. Yep. And I mean, I think the the big question then is like, do you take Gristlebrand this round before Oath gets access to it, or do you just like? I'm gonna say, okay, let's we're gonna do uh, Grave Titan instead, and then we're gonna be able to cast things off of off of our uh, managering. Like have, have it, all of our reanimator targets be uh, drainable. Yeah, I think that um, I think that that is. If I were in Plum Seat, I would take the Gristle Brand here now that Oath is exposed. Right? I don't want. Right. I don't want to get got there if I'm going to do reanimator. Um, the I other option though is. Doing a recurring nightmare package with everything costing six or less, and then just oh. like, that's a pretty sweet list coming out of this right now. Yeah, yeah, I love a, I love a recurring nightmare. We'll we'll see what happens here. There's a lot of room to run here for really all of these drafters. We're only a third of the way into the draft here in round fifteen, well, slightly less actually, but uh, who's counting? Uh, and we're we're seeing these decks start to shape up. Totally. Not that I'm uh, I'm biased or anything, but I may have been. Green real to try to take a recurring nightmare deck. I, it did. It didn't end up happening. I got. I got bullied off of it. But no, it's, that is always. Whenever I talk to someone about strategy, I'm just like, you know, Thrag Tusk is a really great card. You should probably think about that in, in your deck. I think basically at every point in any deck, a recurring nightmare would make it better, and people should draft that card. And then once you're there, take Mesmeric Fiend. Uh, might as well take Thrag Tusk. Might as well take Grave Titan. Yeah. Uh, and at that point, I mean, you should take a Veteran Explorer. That card's pretty good too. <laughs> Mason renewing his commitment to uh, double X cost cards here. Walking Ballista first, Hangerback Walker second, uh, and Zurin Orb for Sam. Oh, oh. Now, Mark, I hate that card. T- why? What's what's wrong with Zurin Orb? What, why don't you like it? What in what game does that card make you win the game that you would not have already won the game? That's that's my problem with Zuranorm. Well, I think step one is to have the card balance, which unfortunately yes. Brandon has. And, and oh, it, right? I get that you can get infinite life, right? But in that yeah. world where you have infinite life, you already have infinite mana. Uh, and why? Why? Like I, I get that. Okay, I'm, I'm at one life, and I need my. Fa- on infinite mana to happen, I can use Zero in order to get there. That feels like not a good enough reason to run a 40th card. But I mean, if if you want infinite mana, right, you do need a sack outlet, right? You, you need you need to be able to put the lands in the graveyard if you're going to go fast wand, crucible, uh, infinite mana, and and Zero in Orb does does fit that bill. So I'm I'm gonna, gonna v- very mildly come to the defense of the card Zero in Orb, a card that I like but also think is bad. <laughs> I, I also I also like the card and love it historically. I just I don't know. I I hope that people prove that Zoranorb is good. If we see a Titania out of Sam, you know, maybe we'll maybe we'll be getting somewhere. I would I would love that. Not my my story. rant about Zoranorb over though. We have a lot of interesting things happening here. Team B is pushing off Luris. Ooh, yeah. uh, we have we have that watery grave getting taken here uh, to complete Plum's list. Yeah, common opponent uh, definitely didn't paste Faithless Looting in from another source. It's not in a different font at all. Don't worry about it. Uh, Talent picking up VRD, VRD wide pet card, Pentad Prism. It's very good. It's and Gitaxium Pro was going pretty late here, I think. Ooh, yeah. As is Fury. Wow. Steven picking up Seasoned Pyromancer to go with that Fury. Really dipping hard into red. We saw the Ragavan in round two and haven't heard a peep out of Steven's desire for red cards since. But since he lost that Reality Smasher, perhaps this is the pivot. A little Boros bully here. And Brazen mm-hmm. Borrower from Plum. Just more good cards. Just, 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 uh, just drafting value here. And if Common is picking up wow. looting, he may be sad to see Season Pyromancer taken away from him here. So which of the Moxen are still out there? We got Mox Amber, not very likely to go. Is uh, Chrome Mox is still undrafted, right? Chrome is still out there. Amber is still out there. I've seen Amber get drafted recently. I think Common drafted it, actually. Baleful Mastery. 
What is that card? So this is a weird commander, or a Strixhaven card, rather. Not a commander card. That has been going up in the pick order. Uh, and by up, I mean it's been getting drafted at all. Uh, it is a uh, it's a cheap removal spell with a drawback that takes out a creature or a planeswalker. Uh, and I'd love to talk about it more, but Real just drafted Gloom Shrieker. That's a very early Gloom Shrieker. <laughs> yes. So... This is a this is a slightly early gloom shrieker here. I wonder if there is some reason to need the enchantment creature because otherwise I'd be looking for eternal witness here most likely. But there could be a plan in play that I don't know about. It beats down a little better, maybe. It it's got that menace right. It only returns permanence and it doesn't. Uh... Oh, I think our audio might have gone out. Maybe not. Oh, one second. Okay. Of all the days for my uh, my <laughs> software mixer to start acting up at random, today has got to be the day, right? It's got to be today, the day on which I we 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 VRD. No, it's all good. Led Led mentor is interesting. Yeah, I wonder if uh, if Brandon is gonna grab the salvagers on the way back around here. Uh, or if Sam is going to, to say, you know what? I can cast a white spell. I have Black Lotus. Give me the Salvagers. I'll use that mana to that cast Evercool. This Gloom Shaker from Real signals to me that everything that they want, they already have. That's people are fighting over. Yeah. Um, and that would be surprising this early, but maybe. I mean, it's, it's possible, right? We're, we're at pick 16. A yeah. lot of the really, like good card like really strong cards that are that that cr have crossover appeal have been drafted now that's not necessarily true for some of the sideboard cards and if i really felt that way that's what i would be looking to do here if i said you know what all the stuff that other people want in my main deck is gone i should draft sideboard cards that's where i'd be or sideboard cards or land depending on uh i like this grudge this is a good grudge here uh, the grudge, the grudge is both uh, offensive and defensive, right? You, you know, like Sam could take ancient grudge, to really mess up Mason if he does ever draft enough artifacts for it to make sense with his Talarian Academy, and uh, picks up a late duress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, I feel like why time uh, or why thought has been kind of pushed down the radiance compared to kind of Discord five and six. Yeah. Uh, is because there's just, I think there are enough good hand disruption spells, right? There's duress, collective brutality is going around 14. It feels like the two mana ones are good enough, and I don't know if it's actually true. People at least think that. Yeah, some, some people think the two mana ones are good enough. Some people don't. I think they are okay. Like, I think they're playable. Um, and Cavern Damn. of Souls here for Sam. That's a cool card. I'm very interested to see what the Cavern of Souls does. Right? Is that, like, what? Okay, yeah, no signal yet on what that could be for. Winter Orb's a good pickup here. Yes, I love this Winter Orb. I think that uh, with the multiple Planeswalkers, with the Urza, um, Brandon is very well positioned to take advantage of Winter Orb. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what that cavern is for. Right? Because, like, in my head, Sam is doing a sneak and show uh, plus plus this, like, land destruction thing. Maybe she's going into twin? Like, maybe that's this is like a sneak and twin kind of deck? Wildborn Preserver. Interesting. Yeah, so this is a card that I think got drafted once in a blue-green flash deck. Uh, because, uh -huh. well, that's where it lived in standard at the time and has uh, since been uh, largely appropriately forgotten. But uh, yep. I think Real says, well, I've got these uh, I've got these Bitter Blossom tokens coming into play. And what if I were to just say, tap all of my mana when one of my fairy rogues entered the battlefield and it was a 6-6? Six, six. How would that be? So Pretty good. Perhaps Perhaps that's what we're going to see here. Uh, oh, it works on Enter the Battlefield, not cast? Yeah, That's not cast, shocking. So Bitter Blossom? 
you know that was that, that's very cool it's, it's an interesting idea we'll see we'll see what happens with wildborn preserver i it looks like the draft has stopped as everyone has, has said to themselves well you know what i've never actually read this card before i didn't know it was a card so let me just take a moment and uh <laughs> and read all of these words yeah, Skull Clamp Bitter Blossom is just like one of my favorite combos in VRD. Um, oh, and yeah. Wildbird Preserver plays incredibly well for that, actually. Lingering Lingering Souls. Souls. Oh my god. Now, comment. comment Was this on the original comment. list? What? Lingering Souls? Yes, Lingering Souls is in the original list. And Common Opponent okay. has no visible sources of white mana other than the card Lotus Petal. So, looks like we're flashing it back. Right, that's that's what it seems like. It seems like a, I'm I'm gonna play Pox and discard my hand and then cast yeah. Lingering Souls from the graveyard. Mind's twist getting picked up for Plum here. Is this Besage you the new one or Besage yes. you the old one? I this forget. Besage you the new one. Okay. Uh, that's a good mind twist. Yeah, it's a good mind twist. It's a slightly late Besage you, uh, tanking the draft stock of Besage you just a little bit. Oh, Mason has to be so pissed about losing on that Phyrexian oh, Revoker. Oh, yeah, the Revoker. I mean, <laughs> Mason has to be so pissed about it. We think. Probably. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> we don't, Given we don't that I think Mason plans on taking creatures in this guy Cradle deck or artifacts in this Talarian Academy deck, I think, uh, Mason, I think that I would be upset. I think Mason wanted, wanted Revoker, but uh, it's not a real surprise that Steven is picking it up. Steven knows... Steven is reading Mason's draft list here as well and knows that if he wants cards like Phyrexian Revoker, he's got to take them soon. After all, he already lost Aether Sworn Canonist, a card he probably wanted, quite frankly. And yep. uh, Steven picking up that late Arid Mesa. Marsh Flats also still out there should Steven be interested in comboing those with a Plateau, a card that probably no one else wants. Well, I'm continuing to just take hand disruption and uh, discards and counter spells. Meanwhile, Talon takes the swan song, just trying to back up whatever combo nonsense is going on over there with cards like Oath of Druids. Swan song, a fantastic yeah. protective counter spell. Yeah, can't agree more. I think that card's great. There's no days yet, which is a little surprising. Yeah, uh, we could see that come out of Plum, but not a lot of other decks feel like they're going to want days, right? Yeah, I agree. I, I don't think most people will want them. Most people can cast them. I don't know if they actually want them, though. Yeah. Ma Mason feels like he'd like a days, but I guess maybe he's not going to play any islands. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know that he's going to play more than one or two islands in his deck, if any. Uh, Common yeah. picks up Bloodgast here, another another card that plays nice nicely out of the graveyard. Uh, Real moving into the sideboard dimension, picking up Needle. I really like that pickup. I like that. Mm -hmm. There's the Spire of Industry from Mason, a card that's definitely better than Glimmer Void. <laughs> yeah, the only card that kind of feels strange to me, well, there's a lot of cards that feel strange to me, but Guy's Cradle feels like one that's uh, particularly weird, assuming that he's going into Elder uh, which is now my new, my new headcanon for where he's going. I love it. The crop rot does that signal that Sam's going to be doing this dark depths thing along with all the other lands? We, I mean, we've we've got we've got this land thing going. You might as well, uh, you might as well yeah. go full bore into lands and pick up the uh, the dark depths thespian stage nonsense. Makes sense to me. Karate. The cavern of souls and Phyrexian metamorph is a little strange still, but we'll see. Yeah, yeah, we'll 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 find out. I I I have no doubt that those cards are for something. What that something is, I absolutely cannot tell you. Because Cavern of Souls and Embercool don't really need to... They are two great tastes that taste weird together. Uh, so, well, I'm, I'm sure that... The, I mean, the Cavern casts Metamorph real nice, you know? If, if, if that's what you need it to do. If you need to force through your clone. But I haven't figured out why yet. Yeah, I mean, it, it is kind of wild, like... We are almost halfway through the draft at this point, and I still don't know like where four of the decks are going to go. Yeah. Normally, the lanes are a little clearer to me. And I think that's very interesting. It, it, it really seems like people have gotten very good at taking these contested cards early and then saying, all right, yep. well, these niche things that, that actually define my strategy but that nobody else cares about, I'll take them 30th. 
You know, I don't need to waste an early pick on that when I could take this uh, this this other card that everybody else wants. And, and I think that's what's happening. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yep. So now, now we see it. We're on it. Oh, Meta Bubbles. I, I, I believe you are one of the players from uh, the St. Lotus Presents, but I don't know who exactly you are. Uh, if you care to, to publicly dox yourself, that would be great. But if not, no worries. Um, I'm not um, surprised that Mark's day is overperformed. Murpha commits a lot of resources to the battlefield. And then once you're there, cards like days are just fantastic. Oh, what's up, Chad? Hey. Happy Father's Day to Chad. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, this this is really interesting. I, I think Sam's... I, I think that you're right that kind of the, the shift has been to just prioritize contested cards early. I think there's also been more willingness to splash around in a way that hasn't necessarily always been true. Like, I think right. that we've often seen some players kind of walk in with one deck that I'm going to draft and then just kind of like fight people and just strong arm your way into that deck. And the more I watch this, I think there's still a couple people that are like that, but more it seems like people have shells and then have lots of pieces that can sub in and out of those shells. Yeah, I think people are people are getting more familiar with the uh, with the format. I think that's awesome. Um, yep. It's, it's very very easy early in the format to be like, here, here are my decks. I'm going to draft this deck. But once you that's a winning to... strategy most of the time, right? Like yeah. you, even, even if you do have someone else that fights, you just have to not blink first. And if nobody blinks, then you both end up with pretty bad decks, but otherwise like usually it's okay. Uh, but I think that the, like the thing we did, we kind of with, I was preparing where we had, here's the like the colors I want to be in. And now yeah. here are the, Packages of five cards that can swap in and out, and like, how do you pair all that together? Is a much more kind of like interesting way of thinking about the format, and it's a lot harder. Uh, but but I think it ends up giving you a more likely eight out of ten deck, even if you're going to get a ten out of ten less often. Yeah, I, and I think I think that's a a a really important, a really valid and important way to approach the format, and you know, I think I think people should try it now. Yes. Now, yes. <laughs> yes, Common just drafted Containment Construct. I, I know, I I see I see the look in your eyes, and yes, this is the plan. You have discovered the I, plan. Let, let, let's pull that one up for yeah. any viewers that might not remember exactly what that card. Definitely. I remember this card and being like, this this pairs a Time Vault or something. Now oh no, okay, got it. This is the Bizarre card. This is uh this is the card that that works great with Bazaar of Baghdad, as you've just pointed out, but also just works great with cards like Faithless Looting, Collective Brutality, uh -huh. Smuggler's Copter, Liliana of the Veil, Dak Faden, Mox Diamond. This is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So you do have to actually still pay the costs mm -hmm. for things. So that lingering souls, we're going to find white at some point, presumably. Potentially, or we're just going to discard it and 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 uh, and and bop it out. I don't know. There's a red version of this from Strixhaven too, right? Oh, is there? I had forgotten. <laughs> no, I hadn't. <laughs> yes, there is. There is conspiracy okay. theorist, and uh, we'll we'll see if that shows up later. True name Nemesis going from I, I believe the best card, the best creature in the format for a while. Nineteenth pick now is interesting. Wow. Um, Chrome Box also being super late, uh, but with this containment construct deck, are we going to see something like is it Mind Swords or whatever the new version of Mind Swords is that makes both players discard two cards? Well, my, I think my, Mind Swords is the original, and there's a new one. Mind Swords does exile. Uh, here's a card I don't remember if is. Uh, on the list, but Delirium Skeins could, of course, show up. Everybody discard three. Um, there is also Dark There's... Dark Deal, the the weird black windfall. Um, There's but... a Modern Horizons version oh, yeah. of Mind Swords. Yeah, it's it's got it's got Overload or something. It's got some or it's got some keyword mechanic. It mind it's Mind something. Let me see if I can yeah. find it. Uh, it's not a goblin, so don't try to tell me that, chat. I've heard that one before. <laughs> I wonder if there's a... I, I think it does also exile, so it's probably not the card that you actually want for this list, but... Is 
Not mind drain. <laughs> mind, is it mind rake? Uh, mind, mind rake sounds very possible. Mind rake, yep. Does that also exile? No, okay, it's, it's, it's both players discard if you pay two. If you, if you overload for the discount. Very cool use of overloading. Yeah. There's the conspiracy theorist. Nice. Once you expose the containment construct, it's time to take the conspiracy theorist. Whenever you discard one or more non-land cards, you may exile one of them from your graveyard. So mass discard, you only get to disc to exile one of them at a time with the theorist. Okay, so real picks up a 20th pick by you, which is pretty good. Um, we'd see people kind of doing their homework and taking the vitamins with the Forbidden Orchard and the Mycocinth Lattice. Emery getting taken by Brandon, which makes sense given the LED maybe. Yeah, we could see some L LED Emery shenanigans here. Um, young Pyromancer for Sam. Now, that's interesting. Because I'm not seeing a ton of cards that want to be friends with Young Pyromancer here yet. And the keyword, of course, being yet. But we also right. have that loot tree. It's the sorceries. Yeah. Mm hmm yeah, Lutri, Wheel. Is this is this going to be a crab deck? Does everything evolve towards crabs in the end? I think that might be what's happening here. Is... I think this is a, I'm going to double my Wheel of Fortune to mill you out. <laughs> All decks are just crab decks at the end of the day. Yep. It's not just Brandon and <laughs> Sam, too. Other people have drafted crabs. Everybody's everybody's playing these. <laughs> that, I feel like Risen Race and Honorary Crab. <laughs> Ris Risen Reef is here for the second time ever we're seeing risen reef folks you know with a lotus score of 1.0 <laughs> <laughs> a perfect one out of one for risen reef uh, <laughs> mason picking up glimpse of nature and memnite looking to just you know play a bunch of garbage artifact creatures all at once. dove in hand of control for brandon but real picking up chain of smog signaling that potential wither bloom apprentice combo uh, uh -huh. or, or that other one that makes the ins the pest tokens, or the five mana one that you uh, don't Sedgmore want. Sedgemore Witch. Yes, Sedgemore Witch thing. Or Liliana, or Professor Onyx is the six mana one, I think. Yes, Professor Onyx is the six mana one. There's also, yeah, a five mana four four that you don't want. That uh, I believe it also com combos with. But um, yeah, you just, you just oh. discard all your cards for the rest of time. I like Chad's idea in chat, which is to take Uba Mask along with uh, along with these conspiracy oh, uh, construct yes. cards. Let's let's pull up uh, Uba Mask here real quick so that uh, everybody can see all the two times it's been picked. Uh, you, no more drawing. You just exile cards face up, and uh, the turn that you exile those cards, you can play them, but not later. So you know that's a good spell snare. That card is very good. Spell Stare, definitely a card that I think does not get enough appreciation. I picked that up like... Very late Remand. 40th or something. Ooh, Remand here. Yeah, we're going to see some kind of uh, combo energy from, from from Plum here. If we're trying to Remand things, most likely we're, we're trying to push people off on a key turn. Miscast from Talon. Ah. I'm starting to get worried about Plum's uh, number of main deck cards. Like that many counter spells is okay, but you're you're really kind of leaning on them hard. And without the free counters, like either people are going to be able to get underneath you and avoid your counter magic, or you're going to have your deck full of counter spells and not actually have a. Yeah, you're going to have no way to win the game, and uh, Master Plum is is running out of road a little bit in that regard. Not a lot of mm -hmm. room re left to draft cards that win the game. So we'll see what happens. Although, I think Time Vault's probably getting abandoned by the side of the road, like a uh, like an old couch. So we'll yep. uh, see what happens with that. I agree that I think Sam's on an elemental plan. Like I yeah. think that Risen Reef has shown that pretty clearly. Obviously, a synergy with Young Pyromancer alone is good enough, but it, that feels like the direction this is going. Just want to put our first pain land of the day, Battlefield Forge, up on the board here. Congratulations, Battlefield Forge, round 22. Possibly your best showing ever. 
Uh, also outpacing uh, the vast majority of dual lands. Not yeah. Plateau, barely. But uh, yeah, three picks behind Plateau is pretty good. Losing out to Plateau, but soundly defeating Sacred Foundry. <laughs> and Underground River right behind it. <laughs> now, that's got to be drafted around now, though, right? It's blue and black. This Inland Council's propaganda machine is really doing some work for people here. I've poisoned everyone's mind. I don't know what I did. <laughs> Chivin <Reef. laughs> The run on Pain Lance has begun! My dreams have come true! <laughs> oh, this is wild. There's a Sedgemore Witch. Sedgemore Witch picked up something that other people are much more likely to want than the uh, than, than the Witherbloom Apprentice, so I think that's a good way to order things. And Brandon brings everybody back to their senses, picking up Breeding Pool here. <laughs> Three Pain Lands in four picks in round 22! <laughs> Yeah, Lanowar Waste is going criminally undrafted by Real. I got so excited I typed Shivan Dreef. I don't know what that is. Worldly Tutor for hey, Sam. Worldly Tutor? I think so. That finds creatures and enchantments, is that right? Uh, I always forget the enchants? other half of all these cards. Creatures and lands? Oh, is it lands? No, it's just creatures. It's just creatures. Okay. It's just the one thing. I think These like pseudo cycles. Yeah, they're they're weird. The, the tutors they they don't they don't know what they're about. One thing, two things, everything. It's impossible to know. Potentially nothing in gamble. The fake tutor. Now it's true. Risen Reef. Nope, but Sage who endures is gone. Risen Reef and Young Pyromancer are very good friends. Absolutely. But you need to have some spells beyond Worldly Tutor in your deck. Yeah. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. And a lot of those good... Uh, I mean, the good cantrips are gone. The blue cantrips, they're they're out of here. I mean, can, well, that's not true. Consider an opt so many. out there. Right? There's the, the terrible modern one that everyone plays that scries too. Serum Visions, the card that nobody should actually play. As well. Right? No, that's not true. They just shouldn't pick it as high as they do. Um, yeah, that's right. I think it's playable. It's something. kind of wild to consider still out there, actually. Mason's on Cheerios. That's oh that's what's gosh. happening here. Well, yeah. It's Cheerios. Yeah, I mean, we got the glimpse. We got these. He's next. He's gonna pick Phyrexian Walker. I think that I think that Walking Ballista <laughs> and Hangerback Walker are not there. <laughs> For, for X, I think that Walking Ballista and Hangerback Walker are not there to be creatures that beat down. I mean, that will happen, but I think they're there to be zero-cost uh, artifacts. Yeah. Is this like that it. one... What's what's that weird five-color commander card that uh, that you... Oh, man. This was a deck in standard for a minute. Uh, what does it do? Hold on. Let me, let me find it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you, you would play this creature, and then it would let you just, like, combo things out of your graveyard. Uh, like, zero-cost cards out of your graveyard. Um, hmm. I don't remember the name of this card. I can't see it in my head. Oh, no. It has a it has a little, like, guy, a construct standing there somewhere. I'll, I'll find it, and then, uh, and then we can talk about it. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Endurance for Sam, another solid elemental. Hercules Recall for Brandon. I'm not uh, not sure that's going to accomplish what he wants it to against Mason, but uh, certainly puts a Blightsteel Colossus back in 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 the hand. Murderous Rider for for real, fantastic card. Hollow One for common opponent. How nice. Does that get picked? Well, it's been picked one other time, usually in what? So Hollow One usually gets picked in round 48. I think this might be that one draft where they drafted 50 cards or something. Ah, yes. Yes, I remember now. Fantastic. This Thank feels you. like a card that doesn't get drafted, is what that says. Yeah, Lotus score of, of exactly zero. Negate for Master Plum. We are, we are running out of... The, the, plan, the plan must be coming in the 40s, because it's not here yet. 
Shell Doc Isle for right. Talon. Interesting. I feel like Talon wants these games to go nice and fast. You know, play play Channel, play Oath of Druids. Shell Doc Isle uh, indicates a commitment to a longer game. Okay, so Enduring Renewal was one of the cards I was talking about for the combo. Yes, you do. But that's Enduring not the Renewal. one that was in Standard. I'm sure this is like some terrible three card combo that Mason is not actually drafting. But now I am committed to finding it. Oh yeah, no, we gotta find out. <coughs> Pardon me. No, I think um I think we're very likely to see something like Enduring Renewal out of Mason here. He's he's gotta actually parlay these cards into winning the game. And I mean, Ravager, Memnite, Enduring Renewal, uh does the thing right like that's that that yep. that'll that'll dry that'll dry your deck or not dry your deck but that'll that'll make you make you a very big ravager rather and uh with with glimpse it involved mox amber i know it involved mox amber tashar uh, this is the tashar, tashar combo yes Yeah, I, I don't think that's what's going to happen here, but um, that that is definitely a thing that could happen. Uh, what is what is the actual name of this card? Hishar Ancestors Apostle. There we go. So, whenever you cast a historic spell, you return target creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Um, yeah, so that was very, very well used in, in standard with Mox Amber and a bunch, just just made infinite mana. Obviously, without multiple Mox Ambers, it's a little harder to to make that particular interaction happen here. But we are going to see something like this out of Mason. I'm I'm quite sure. I'd be surprised if we don't see Tishar in his deck, right? Yeah. I mean, you have a, a, a Ravager in play, and suddenly you have infinite mana. You have, sorry, you have infinite, oh. and then infinite yeah. counters. Steven picking up Eldrazi Displacer Waste. and a Dark Car Wastes. Fluster Ooh, Fluster Storm for Talon. Toxic Deluge for Plum. Again, we just mm -hmm. have this uh this blue this Demir control shell. I missed Plum. this, but that, that endurance and it Hercules recall are both very good in mm -hmm. pick 23. Xander's Lounge. Xander's Lounge. Yeah, those tri lines are solid. Yeah. Yeah, him good? that's a late him it is a very late him very well well picked up by real something that uh i think is going to serve them well just a fantastic card if you can cast it and, and real's absolutely set up to cast it enlightened tutor for brandon looking to go get um winter orb or winter orb <laughs> Uh, maybe I mean, some big presum money. presumably some of these, yeah, LED plus uh, maybe we do end up getting that combo at some point here. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, yeah, the, the Oriac Salvagers is still on the table here. That that could still get swept up. Oboro Palace in the Clouds. Uh, everything's crabs. Everything's crabs. It has. I love, I love Sam's deck. I mean, it's not surprising that she's drafting crabs, but it is great. <laughs> All, all decks converge on Hedron Crab and Ruin Crab, given enough picks. <laughs> uh, I wonder if if Sam is trying to take Oboro before Brandon does. That is a. <laughs> I'm legitimately wondering if that is that is her concern here. Springleaf drum for the Mason. Shelf. Uh huh. This this is feeling like an enduring renewal deck. It, it looks like my trouble with these decks is always that I just I don't know how they uh, I don't know how this kind of deck wins when it doesn't draw its combo half right if you don't draw the Tashar or a Duer Renewal is that enough cards oh I can tell you it doesn't okay good good <laughs> having <laughs> having had experience with this type of deck myself uh, in um, that VRD where we we played like half the games at, at your house because half of us were yeah. were were local. Um it doesn't. Thought monitor is a solid pickup here. But it's okay that it doesn't because the other games it wins on turn two. 
Right, and the nice thing about uh, the current mulligan rules is you can take a mulligan here and just, just you know, mm -hmm. it's 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 not free, but it, it kind of feels free. You know, your mulligan to six is like... <laughs> okay, hang on. Hold. Let's pull that one up. We got a reader. <laughs> now, this is a card from Ravnica Block. Um... Okay, this is like a bad version of Rurik Thar. And by bad, I mean way better. Well, it's it's very different. It's 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 like bad boring moose, right? Yeah. It, it, oh, it sorry, that's a good one. Yeah. It doesn't cost a jillion mana, which is nice. Um, and and so you you tap your lands, you return them to your hand, and then you you throw them at stuff. I I think we're going to see mostly tapped lands being returned to their owner's hands here. I think that's most of what Living Trister is going to be used for to generate infinite land drops with fast wand and a uh, forest and crab. Yes. And then Zuranor, for yep. some reason. To keep you alive. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta stay alive. Can't die to your fast bond. Castle Lockthwain. Interesting. Ooh, Castle Lockthwain. <coughs> Pardon me. Did I spell that it just right? draws a card, right? Yeah. yeah it's the, nice, well done. The draw a card, and then you lose life equal to the number of cards in your hand. Just a nice way to keep your hand full if you are... If you're starting to dip down to that zero or one card threshold, you say, you know what? I'd actually like to win this game. Mm -hmm. Fits nicely in the mana base. Creeping Tar Pit for common. Yeah, we'll see if uh, Steven ends up playing the colorless version of Castle Lockthwain, which is something. I don't remember the name of that card. But oh, it's similarly uh, three mana tap draw card. War Room uh, is the card I believe you're thinking of. It's not, but it's close. Uh, oh. Although maybe it is. Well. Oh. Okay. Huh. Well, that, that's a different one. Yeah, that's not the card we're thinking of. Because this refers to your commander's color identity. And um, that doesn't really work here. Uh... Oh, thanks. Um, thanks. It's from that. Oh. Thanks, St. Lotus, for referring to Ward of Bones. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, it's from Oath of... The gate oh, watch. Seagate Wreckage. Seagate Wreckage. That's the one. Yep, thank you. Only works when to you To be clear, I don't think it's very likely. Yeah. I doubt we will see Seagate Wreckage. Consider. Wreckage. Yep, a very late consider for Talon. I like this Ottawara. It's a good... good one. Oh yeah, Ottawara is fantastic. I am a, I'm a big fan of, uh, of these lands that you can just discard for value. And uh, Steven's not a big fan of all these lands. That's why he's picking up Tomic. Oh, hang on. Tomic is pretty good against Sam. I mean, yeah. regardless of everyone else, of course, has random pickup. Yeah, Tomic is a, uh, a very powerful anti-land plan uh, uh, card. And Liquid Metal Torque here to go with the Karn. Just sort of start picking things off. Picking off your lands. There we go. Mm-hmm. Uh, liquid Metal Torque, a nice improvement over uh, the original Liquid Metal object, because it makes mana, too. Cody. Yeah. Um, yeah, Tomic is, is, is just going to be a fantastic card against Sam. Just uh, no targeting your lands, no playing your lands out of the graveyard. None of, none of these things are allowed. Nissa, no thank you. Childhood me seeing this card, I'd be like, oh man, it's a two mana, two, three flyer. What's the huge drawback? Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's the drawback. The, the, <laughs> the drawback is it's 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 great. It's really strong. Yeah. Okay. Takanuma the Black discard card. Is that the new one? The re or what is that? Uh not reanimate. What's the what's the word? Raise death. It's it's black raised death. Yeah, but it, it also it also mills you, right? Um, oh cool. So perhaps that is going to be part of uh, a late pickup reanimator package here. Oh right, torque doesn't yeah, hit lands. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if it was. Yeah, torque doesn't hit lands. Oh, uh, interesting. Yeah, Takanuma just got played in Vintage. I think uh, about two weeks ago. I don't know if it was Brian Weissman or somebody. One of one of the like innovators, the guy that invented the the Oath deck recently, like the the. Oh, um... Um, the green white oath deck, the yeah. green white dragon, Dromoka. 
Yeah, the who, uh, who built that? Yeah, I don't remember. Brian that. Kelly. Yep. Yeah, there it is. There Brian it is. Kelly top baited with a Takanuma in his deck. And I don't know if it's good, but it's, it's, it's all play and vintage. Brian Kelly, what if I if I recall one of the uh, the uh, Eternal Weekend stalwarts, I believe. Oh yeah, and and I don't know if he's guy, one, two of them, or just one, one. Yep. Uh, been been a Echo while. Echo of eons. Ooh, Echo of eons getting picked up here. Echo of eons, of course the. Uh, the flashback twister here, um, here to uh, here to do something with uh, with with the hull breacher that Brandon already has. Yeah, I mean, I, as a as a the epic storm player, uh, yes, I, Echo of Aeons and Lions Eye Diamond are very good friends. Oh yes, they are. This I card in my hand makes I have not seen this one. card. Yeah, Tireless Provisioner, yet another piece of landfall synergy, helping pick up some food and treasures. Okay. I would guess mostly treasures. <coughs> I think you're right. I have a weird so feeling. So this, this uh, Cavern of Souls is just going to name whatever card Sam sees in her hand, I think. Yeah. That's, that's the... Yeah, just uh, pl uh, I would like you to not counter this. Right. Yeah, because so far we've got uh, you know this this elf scout to go with our elementals Eldrazi and uh, wacky clone human wizard probably on the pyromancer. Oh yeah, I believe that's a human wizard. Yeah. Let's check. Yes, I did mean young pyromancer. No, it's a shaman. Young pyromancer's a shaman. shaman. Woo. Who knew? Not me. I do think that there's there's probably a red green shaman deck somewhere here Ooh, in yeah. Garrity Land. Ramanap Excavator has not been picked yet. It's just that it's it's, uh, it's it's impossible to spell, like most magic cards. There we go. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Mason picking up that Frogmite. Uh, I, I don't. I doubt we'll see. Doubt we'll see Mirror Enforcer, but uh, I can dream. <laughs> it's yeah. a little costly. Just go, maybe a little too much. <laughs> Mirror Enforcer. We got that thought. Mason guess. being like, I don't like how Affinity has turned into robots. We're going to make it Affinity again. <laughs> We're going to make it Affinity. We've got, we've picked three cards in a row that have actual Affinity for artifacts. Yes. The, uh, the duel, the, the true duels continue to just free fall down the standings. Brandon picking up a, a 27th pick Savannah. <laughs> Oh, I think our I think our our bot our bot message is is out of date. I'm not seeing the emote. It's, no, the the emote I don't think actually works in bot messages. We'd have to turn MTG bot into a subscriber, and that would be a a whole oh, thing. That would be that that would be a lot of work to turn MTG bot into a subscriber. We'd have to gift it a sub. sub and blah, 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 blah. Not worth that. Not worth the the dollars per month on that one. Death right shaman for real. Now that's interesting because real does not possess any of the fetches but uh six of their seven opponents will correct and yeah we discussed this and and my my stance was death Ray shaman is not nearly as good as you think it is yep. but it is a reliable source of two damage every turn from turn four on yeah so yep. if you want that it's good yeah if if you just want if you just want to shock people then then shock away I don't know that this is a deck that want, needs to shock people every turn, but I do think that with cards like Bitter Blossom, Doughty Voidwalker, applying pressure every turn, that it could be much stronger than I give it credit for. Uh, Master Plum did not abandon that time vault, apparently. We've got the late Manifold key here. 27th pick. I mean, why why draft it earlier, right? Why bother? Mm -hmm. Common finishing up our, our collection of fetch lands. Common with three fetches. That's really good. That's just really, really good for their mana. Whoa. Simeon Spirit Guide from cool. Steven. That's a cool card. What? I... Yeah, I mean, it'll do things. Yeah. It's it's gonna... It's gonna... <laughs> it's, it, it, it's gonna get uh, cards like Thalia down sooner. 
And and that's great. You get cards like Karn down sooner, and that's great. I mean, it's just it's just Iron some extra ice. mana. It's, it's a it's a Lotus uh-huh. Petal effectively, and that's that's going to be fantastic. Yeah, I'm just like watching at this point. This is just completely wild. The manifold key just thrown me way off on Plum's plan. Yeah. I, I guess it's just I'm gonna I'll naturally draw both of them sometime. So I'll counterspell everything for the whole game and just play my two cards at some point and end it. Nope, just kidding. Here's Tezzeret, Tezzeret, okay. the that's the tutor. Yep, another yep. time vault tutor. So so what we did was we drafted we just drafted Demir Control up front with the time vault and then said yep. In a couple of hours, I'll take these cards I need. Don't call it a comeback. He's been here for years. I love it. Also, Common might have the best mana of anyone I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. Like, it's Mox amazing. Diamond, three fetches, with Tryland, uh, a couple true duels. Yeah. Yeah, a couple true duels, and then, dear God. The Steam Vents to go with it, yeah. And the Chalice for Mason, like, hello. Hey. Yeah. Just a real quick Chalice on Zero here for you, friend. Real, just completely denigrating the pain lands committee. We are we are disappointed in in the actions <laughs> of real, and uh, oh no, they're starting to run on the horizon lands. Brandon picks up waterlogged grove. Looks like Sam's probably going to pick up fiery island here. Just keep keep the pain going. With the pain lands, you can at least choose when you want them to hurt you. Nope, she wants more elemental. Chandra acolyte of flame. It is. It's the three mana one that spits out the temporary elementals. Mm-hmm. Mason drafts <laughs> lands. lands. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think more lands. <laughs> I don't think that's how this works. I'm not sure. Yeah, I want to check to see who that is. That's uh, okay. Anonymous alligator is the one that's been placing that. Okay, well, that's. I'm. I'm guessing that's Mason then. Chandra Acolyte of Flame. Yeah, two 1-1 one, one red elemental creature tokens that gain haste, and you sack them at the beginning of your next untap step, so. Very Find good with, uh... Oh, yeah. Are we going to see Master of Waves out of her? We could! Now, what's that it's... devotion to blue going to be like? It'll be one, but, you know, all those elementals, it's a lord for elementals, and uh, it makes a guy, it makes a little friend with him. Yeah. It's probably not good enough. It's probably not, but... I was going to say look at those abs, but that doesn't appear to be how Merfolk fit, uh, anatomy works, because Master of Waves is just sort of is just sort of uh, divided into quarters here. I don't really understand the mus- musculoskeletal structure <laughs> here, but uh, look, I'm not a Merfolk. I don't know. This isn't, this, this isn't my physiology. I gotta pull this up. The original one did too, actually. Let me zoom in. The original one just kind of has like four pecs and then <laughs> it has abs that are cut in half like scales so, so it's like shells mason does not think that mere enforcer and sojourner's companion are over costed on the contrary he's ready for it let's just take a look at sojourner's companion uh which is another which is mere enforcer 2 the sequel to mere enforcer but better because it artifact land cycles i <laughs> Okay, okay. This I don't know. Popper All Stars making a splash in VRD now. Yeah. Like, I'm not worried about Mason going from land five to land seven, or uh, from artifact five to seven. I'm worried about how does Mason get artifacts two and three. Yes, correct. Um, and I think the answer is by drawing them in his draw step. That like. Yeah. Because we're not going to cast Thought Cast for four mana. That's not going to occur. <laughs> I don't think no. we'll... <laughs> Mason's going to be playing like 12 lands. And two of them are going to be Gaius Cradle and uh, Talarian Academy, which may <laughs> or may not tap for mana on turn one. So uh, Nissa Steward of Elements here, here to, uh, here to put land cards from the top of the library onto the battlefield. Or, you know, maybe other stuff, but probably Lance. Settle the wreckage for Brandon. Brandon says, I don't know what you, how you all are going to kill me, but I'd prefer you didn't kill me with creatures, please. Just shuffle those back in. Goodbye. Or whatever Settle does. Exiles them. 
shuffled them in. Yeah, just exile. I think, I think it might have been Chad that played Glacial Chasm against me, but that, that is a card that feels like it's going to be very good for someone in this draft, yeah. probably for Sam. I want to see Sam pick up Glacial Chasm. Because, yeah, it's just, oh, oh, no, my Glacial Chasm. I didn't pay for it. It's back. <laughs> yep. On Earth. Interesting. Oh. This seems like a value on Earth. Yeah, this, I mean, this is definitely a value on Earth. Something like, th- this way you can play your Sedgemore Witch early, and then if it gets if it gets killed, you just unearth it and then cast your Chain of Smog and go off. Or you, uh, you know, you unearth your, your Douthy Voidwalker, right? That doesn't exile itself, does it? Uh, Voidwalker does not. It sacrifices, yeah. Yeah. So real, despite kind of like just drafting whatever, I think still has very real chance of playing Luris out of the sideboard and uh, uh, Luris as a companion in sideboard games. Yes. Like you cut three cards from your deck and you're there. Yeah, that's definitely a possibility. You draft some low-cost sideboard cards, cards like the Veil of Summer real already has. And then you just say, all right, goodbye, Questing Beast, goodbye, Gloom Shrieker, goodbye, Sedgemore Witch, yep. goodbye, Murderous Rider. And you got yourself a yeah. real stew going. <laughs> you got uh, you got some low drops to, to, to beat people up with. I like it. But I yeah, think me too. Is... I, I don't know if you start with it or not, but it definitely seems like a good sideboard plan in some games. I, I think I think Luris probably just ends up in the in the main deck, most likely, just being a Luris. It's it's powerful Agreed. enough. Yep. No Lotus shenanigans, but you do what you gotta do. Common taking. Yeah, so I think there. all the decks have all the decks have kind of revealed themselves. We have Mason on this affinity list, uh, yep. probably with Enduring Renewal, maybe, I assume. We got Sam on <laughs> elemental shenanigans, mostly with uh strip mine locks as the win con. Yep. And uh we'll we'll Brandon, probably who see knows? Crabs. Yeah. Yeah, true. Crabs are good. Yeah. I don't know where, where Brandon's going. I mean, there's a lot of, like, good packages in here, but I don't know. I don't see a cohesive thing coming out of it just yet. Yeah, it's hard to say with Brandon's decks sometimes until you see them at the end. And even then, sometimes it's hard to know. But uh, he always does well, so... <laughs> yeah, real. There is, a, there is a chance, just so you know, in, in about... in. About half an hour that I'm gonna have to leave the house to go see if the baby is coming early. Absolutely, we'll you you do whatever you need to do, and I will uh, I will take this one home by myself if need be, uh, because uh, it would be it would be a very happy Father's Day indeed. Um, it's true, It'd be a wild <laughs> a wild gift. Yeah, I like this null rod. Uh, I think real should probably be taking whatever collector oof at this yes. point, um, but we'll see. No one else is really in green to fight for it. No, I, I, I don't think anyone else. Well, Brandon might take Collector Oof. That's a, that's a possibility. Uh, it would hurt him and his mana quite a bit, but he could take it, and then he could still activate yep. Urza, which would be fine. Uh, opposition agent for Master Plum. Remember when this used to get drafted like fifth? Yeah, I, I think it probably should be drafted probably around the forty fifth. <laughs> uh, it's just it hits like two cards in each deck and no. they aren't usually massively impactful I think that when you get somebody with op- opposition agent it feels so good that you just kind of forget about what happened uh, the rest of the games where you drew right. it and it didn't do anything I think that's exactly right and like sometimes a 3 mana 3-2 three, flash is okay but yeah it's just usually not What's Talon doing here? Chain Lightning and Taiga. Is this... Is this a pivot? I'm trying to figure out, because this is... Talon's on the Oath channel deck. Is this just, I want to be able to answer a creature, so I want to have Fire Eyes and Chain Lightning to be able to, like, answer small creatures to stay alive until I get my combo off? Maybe. That's what I think. It could be, it could be, but... Uh... The Taiga is very late, so, like, maybe this is a... I wanted to have Taiga, and I already have the fetches to get it. Yeah, like that's splashing true. into green for what? Talon's got the Mire and the Heath, and we've we've got green. We need green for Oath and Channel, so that makes oh sense. Channel, yeah, yeah, yeah. This could just yeah. Be I think this is just value. creature answers. That's all this is. Sun Edict for Master Plum. Great way to get rid of something like Blightsteel Colossus. I love that. 
Everyone loves a split-second Diabolic Edict. That definitely... <laughs> That's fine. I remember when this card got printed and I was like, Do we have to? <laughs> Why can't I play Diabolic Edict anymore? Now I have to play this. I like Diabolic Edict. It had good flavor. Flash Free is coming down for Common Opponent. Now, that's a fantastic sideboard card, hitting red and green spells for just two mana. Great card to bring in out of the board here. And Reel's got this Thrag Tusk. We, we could see Recurring Nightmare, Mark. It could happen. Thrag Tusk has I hope, I hope that is true. <laughs> I, I after, after discussing this, I think Thrag Tusk is just an answer against the aggressive decks. Almost. Uh, but I don't know. Hey, you know what they say. Always carry two spears. <laughs> that is the flavor text on that card. Yes. Sometimes <laughs> sometimes you peel back the layer of the joke and it turns out there was no joke in there at all. <laughs> there, was, there just there simply wasn't one. I started a sentence and yeah. I needed Where, a way to... Werewolves end. hate collars. <laughs> uh, especially <laughs> the collar... <laughs> Of Avison. I am trained in all three schools of magic. <laughs> or uh, uh Rosewater just needs to write all the flavor text, I think. What is what is it? Sometimes you go to hell and sometimes hell comes to you. There it is. That's hell to <laughs> sir. That one I like. That <laughs> one's a pretty good one. I actually like that flavor text. <laughs> Corsair of Kerfix. Before I start saying more flavor text. <laughs> I could keep going. Don't let me. Oath of Nyssa for Brandon. I like that. I think that's a good way to like make sure he can cast these various planeswalkers. Corsair for Sam. More ways to get lands off the top. Bomat Courier for Mason. Another one-drop artifact one. creature that can cash in the hand. There's the plating. All right. I like it. That's a good pick. Plating goes, goes really direct. well with Ornithopter, Memnite, Phyrexian Walker. All of these, these little idiots that just don't attack for anything. Uh-huh. I expect Brandon to pick up Ashiok, the Dream Render. Like that oh, one yeah. that one seems like it's a pretty good pickup. Yeah, the I'm trying uh, to think of other like Do Dovin's been taken. What are the other War of the Spark uh walkers that we are missing still? Hmm. I don't I don't see I can, none come to mind immediately, but Yeah, I think it's really just uh I think it's really just Ashiok, which I think would be great for Brandon. Yep. Brandon would be able to shut down shut down some shenanigans and uh and and just really grind people out, which it looks like is what he's looking to do, is grind people out. Here come the crabs. It begins. Ruin Crab is here. I'm sure we'll see Altar of the Brood at some point. Very dangerous of her to pass this direction on the Ruin Crabs. I feel like if I were her, I would be taking the crabs when it goes the other direction, so Brandon doesn't have two opportunities to steal the other one. Right, you take you take one crab coming and one crab going, and you just you just leave Brandon with nothing, with no room to work with. <laughs> right, leaving six play six players to take crabs and two picks feels like a wild wild choice. Almost, most certainly, most certainly, collector oof for Brandon. So uh, reels nice. gotta be a little bit a uh, little bit sad about that. Brandon Brandon making a good pick here. I mean, that, that's a very late collector oof. I feel like Real had every opportunity and probably either didn't want it or... Uh, I, I think collector oof normally goes in the 20s. Yes, it does. Okay, maybe not very about, late, but... Eh, I mean, it's, it's about 10 rounds ago, and the... the uh, while the distance between rounds 22 and round and round 31 doesn't doesn't always seem too high, I think it's I think there is quite the distance. Scavenging ooze here for Real. Do you think we might see Lion Sash out of Steven today? It does. I mean, we don't see any dedicated graveyard decks, so I don't think it's necessary, but maybe. Yeah. Like, we do see, see some things like, uh, like obviously Lion's Ash is just fine as a beater by itself, right? But that doesn't seem like the angle that Steven needs to go down. But if we do see it, I bet it's going to be in these next two picks right here. If there were a graveyard deck, it would be an interesting card to pick up alongside Stoneforge. So that's, that's my Oh, true. Point. That's wild. Yeah, that's great. The, the, equipment, the equipment. Actually, yeah. Type, with, with that in mind, I like it a lot more. It's a, it's just a question of whether whether Steven wants to uh, wants to spend a pick on it. I don't I don't think anyone else is going to take Lion Sash from him. Although Brandon could surprise us and say, "Well, I didn't get Scavenging Ooze. I'd like the sequel, please." Right. 
I mean, Steven does ha already have three equipment. His deck can't run infinite equipment. And right. obviously the sword is probably coming out of the board. Um, but his deck's going to get cluttered up pretty quick. Although Lion Sash does a pretty good double duty on that count. Sash would probably have to come out of the board too. Because while it does do double duty in terms of creature and, and uh, equipment... It, uh, it does not start big. <laughs> it is a That's two true. mana 1-1. One, one. And that is a little... Right? 1-1? One, one? Uh, is it a 2 Yeah, it's a 2 mana 1-1. One, one. Yeah, it's a 1-1. One, one. Okay, yeah. There we go. So it's a little... It can be a little awkward until it's uh, until it starts moving. But it's an interesting card. Blood, Blood Crypt for common. Just really shoring up the mana here. I like that a lot. If you're going to be playing three colors... Like, you really need to prioritize drafting lands a lot. I mean, common is going to take Bizarre Baghdad, right? Like, that feels like a natural pickup at some point here. I mean, if if common's going to take Bizarre Baghdad, he can wait another 15 picks before he does it, I think. That's reasonable. That's reasonable. I, I don't remember if it was on the list, but we'll see. You're right, though. There's nobody else that would even want it, like... I, I can imagine real maybe pivoting into bizarre plus Vengevine or something silly, but that's like all of, that's all of a sudden somebody's in a completely different deck. If 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 real does that, if I'm in common seat and I see real pick up bizarre Baghdad and, and Vengevine, more pa more power to you, my friend. That that would be my yeah, exactly. Up oh, can't take Lotus Petal, Steven. It's gone. <laughs> I don't I don't think you can get a thirty first round Lotus Petal. After all that card... Can I interest you in an Elvish Spirit Guide instead? <laughs> we might see Elvish Spirit Guide here in one of these two picks if Steven is really looking to just power out something like Thalia on turn one. He doesn't have a lot of ways to activate this Fury. I mean, presumably he'll just cast it for fairness, right? But there's not a lot of red cards. Let's roll up and see. We've got the Raghavan. The Season Spirit Guide. Answer Fury. Spirit Guide. Yeah, we're a little thin on ways to make Fury happen, huh? Or but I mean, Fury card. is a castable card. Oh, yes, and a fantastic one. One that's been very impressive in VRD. So this Oast of Druids channel deck now has a Worm Coil engine that's payoff. Still yep. no Gristlebrand. No Gristlebrand. Uh, and a Blightsteel Colossus. Yeah, we have so I think we're going to be maybe a mere Battle Sphere, but we're, it seems like an artifact uh, color -like combo. Yeah, Talon does also have Tinker, if I recall correctly. Mm. That's that's a great point. So that, that makes the Ulamog that I was thinking of less likely. Archivist of Ogma is a new one from uh, Battle for Baldur's Gate here. Uh, whenever an opponent uh -huh. searches your, their library, you gain a life and draw a card. Is anyone searching their library often enough to justify the inclusion of this 2-2 flash grizzly bears? I don't think so. Uh, I mean, everybody will search their library once to twice per match. Uh, or not, not once or twice per game, probably. Yep. So if you happen to have it on turn two, it's pretty good. I think we may have to live with I don't a know if it's sheet. good enough, though. We can either delete the formula or, or live with a yellow sheet for the rest of the time, because I don't think the Battle for no, no, no. Gate cards are in the, uh, in the, the, the back end, or in the back end yet. Uh, it, it it is available though, right? I can right, it should it. be. It's it's available. The, the set is out. The set is the set isn't released. Ah, uh, yes, we are we are we are putting Archivist of Agma over here, and we're going to know that that's Archivist of Agma, but uh, Stephen is going to to placeholder draft the card City in a bottle, and we're just all going to know that that is Archivist of Agma for the rest of time because yeah, no I'm just gonna put it in. Draft City in a bottle, yep. Oh, there we go. Perfect. A little copy-paste action. I love it. Yep. Just... Huh. I'm surprised to see Destructive Revelry here. This is, um... This is a very hard-to-cast disenchant that deals two damage. I'm also surprised to see it. Uh, I mean, we already see Fire Ice. There's just like... Yeah, What? why? I mean, Pentad Prism makes it a lot easier to... There's a lot of cards. The mana for Talon is pretty good. Yeah. I just don't know why you need this card in particular. 
Maybe just, maybe he really wants a disenchant. Right, but you can just draft like there's no there's no enchantments to speak of in this draft. You can just draft like natural state, right? That's the, the Talon already has nature's claim. Why not simply corner the market on one green one green cards that do this and pick up natural Are there enchantments state. were missing. Like uh, Talon has the good enchantments, right? right. Like there's an oath over Talon there. Talon has the oath. You can you can get um, unravel the aether, which is a card that I really like and think is uh, an underappreciated sideboard card, right? Just shuffle that shuffle that artifact back into their deck and they can't emery it or whatever. Yeah, I don't see any... I mean, Bitter Blossom, you can hit Bitter Blossom, you can hit Corsair of Crew Fix. There's a Natural. few reasons why I can see it choke. Natural State hits all of those cards and costs one less. That's fair. No, you make a good point. Um, it's also not like Talon's going to be pressuring life total. Yeah, um, maybe there's something I'm not seeing, but... There, I, I, I wonder if it's something we're not seeing or if it's just a card that Talon really likes, which, frankly, is a, is is totally a reason to pick a card in VRD because, like, what what other chance are you going to get to draft to draft and cast the cards that you really love? If that's what you want to do, you should do it. That's VRD. I've done it. Absolutely. Uh, uh, welcome to the chat, Hyphen. We are yeah. watching some wild shenanigans happen. As you uh, we, have a, we have a true affinity deck going. Yeah. Mirror Enforcer, Frogmite, Sojourner's Companion, Thought Cast, and Thought Monitor were all drafted right in a row. Five cards in a row with the text Affinity for Artifacts on them. Really incredible. Let's talk about Infernal Reckoning. Just real quick. Because <laughs> this is a great side. I like this card. Common. Yeah. It picks off, uh, you know, Colorless Eldrazi. It... it <laughs> Uh, not not Emrakul though, uh, but it picks off most of Mason's deck. Brandon grabs Memory Jar, Reel with Choke, Brushfire Elemental. What is that? Ah, it's an oh, this is the beatdown guy. Okay. Well, it's either it's the beatdown guy, but it also kills you, right? Because oh, true. Yeah, with infinite land drops. That's yeah. fair. And uh, a lot of the creatures in this format can't block it because a lot of the creatures in this format are tiny. That's true. So that's kind of incredible, actually. I really like that. This is a deep cut. Me too. I, Yeah, I, I like this one a lot. It's a great pickup. Like, and, and it makes the Zura Norb almost playable. I like. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mason also dipping into cards we don't usually see, grabbing Zabaz the Glimmer Wasp. I think only ever drafted by Kevin Freeman in uh, St. Lotus 7, if I recall. Or was that or, or was That's that nice. in the Presents? I don't remember. It was one of the two. I think it... Yeah, it was one of those two. This obviously blows up your own creatures. It's the second outlet for this uh, Arcbone Ravager combo yep. with Enduring Renewal, maybe, somehow? Of course, sure. Mason could still draft 46th pick, as he could with Tishar. Yep. Uh, in Vault Scourge, just for more cheap artifacts. Ooh, I like this Thorn. Interesting. Yeah, that hits that hits quite a few of the decks. Yeah. Like, it's obviously a sideboard card, but it's pretty good. Common continuing this fascination with Squee, Goblin, Nabob. Last time it was Squee with Survival. This time it's Squee with Discard Outlets. Interesting. Just saying, I'll, if I just want to get value, discard a card and draw a card and then put Squee back in my hand in my next upkeep. Let's go. What's this card that Steven, though, is always fascinated with? The the red-black card from uh, from the D&D set, the Commander? Uh, it costs four mana. It has an ability at the end of your turn that exiles a card. I don't oh. think it actually has discard synergies now that I'm thinking about it aloud. Are we talking about Prosper? I was talking about Prosper. Yeah, yeah, here's Prosper. Yeah, exiles exiles the time. Okay, that's only exile. Once you play it, yeah. Energy and flux. Cont containment construct does not work with that, right? Containment construct does not exile it. Okay. Uh, contain containment construct, I believe, does exile the card. I forget. Conspiracy theorist does. Uh, so I mean, Pros Prosper also does. So. Yeah, Prosper could work with this deck. I mean, it's expensive, but yeah. you already are kind of doing all that stuff. Why is Kozilek red? Oh, it's because we 
Okay, everything's fine now. <laughs> Ulamog for Town. I love his energy flux. Yes. Now, has Steven picked up Kozlek just as crab insurance? Yeah, I okay. think so. That's because we, we we can't we can't cast that right. He 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 he's, he can't cast that. But I I also love this energy flux. I think that's a great pickup. Cathar's command. Energy flux. I think should be taken. I think energy flux should roughly be taken when um when Veil of Summer does. I think it's, I think it's a twentieth pick. Yeah. Latest. Energy flux usually going around twenty eight. Uh, it's it's a little late here. I, I also think it should be picked earlier than 28. I, sh I think it should be picked in the high 20s because you, you can always get somebody with energy flux. You can you can just turn somebody's deck off. <laughs> it's really brutal. Well, yeah. There is always one deck at the table that if you resolve an energy flux, you cannot lose. And then there are lots of other decks that if you play it against them, they're going to have a very hard time. Yeah. Talon picking Cathar up Commando, is that, is that the new Disenchant? Ah, uh, yes. Cathar Commando is the uh, Disenchant on a stick. Nice. It's uh, And yeah, the, the two two Ulamogs are cool. Yeah. Kasali Pride Mage with uh, fewer steps and also Flash, which is huge. This card's fantastic, honestly. It's a common. Jeez. That's wild. <laughs> So, so the double Ulog means that that obviously isn't tinkerable, but it is channel and oathable. Yep. Uh, figuring out how many creatures you want in your oath deck is always a really hard problem. Yeah, it's it's a difficult it's a difficult thing, and again, balancing that with the channel, like we were saying earlier, that's a uh, th those those two those two cards are pulling at opposite ends of the spectrum a little bit because you don't want channel to just sit in your hand. Right. I guess all of these cards do kind of just win the game. Like, yep. Worm Coil is probably the weakest of them so far, but um, you're obviously not going to be unhappy if you resolve a Worm Coil. Yeah, Worm Coil. Worm Coil will win you the game plenty of time, plenty of the time, uh, enough of the time that it's it's probably worth playing. So the thing that I want to see happen, which I know won't, mm -hmm. will be uh, you you play an Oath of Druids into their single creature. You resolve your Oath, hit Worm Coil. They shatter your Worm Coil, and then they Oath back and get their giant creature. Ooh, yes. That feels like a, a, a really fun uh, anti-synergy that will I never like happen. It. I hope that happens. But like you said, will never happen most likely. <laughs> Baleful Strix is a good pickup. Yeah, Baleful Strix is I still don't really know what Plum is. Is Plum just to go, just on the Time Vault plan, we think, here? Everything else to support that? Yeah, it looks like we are on blue-black control. I will eventually win with Time Vault, and if I don't, I will win with True Name Nemesis and uh, Ledger Shredder and Brazen Borrower and and uh, various sure. various flavors of Jace. The Takanuma is, I guess, just just to get back those like True Name and things like that for well, the late game. That's a pretty free card. Planeswalkers, I believe. Okay, so you can get your Narsa back. You can get your Narsa back. You can yeah, get your right. JTMS back. Yeah, creature or planeswalker. Everybody has trying... blessing. There's <laughs> crabs. <laughs> Everybody's trying to dodge the mill plan. Yeah, I mean it's it's a, it's exactly on time for Gaia's blessing, historically. Yep. We got Brandon with a rest in peace. Is this gonna be a helm helm change? Oh, and light tear into helm. It could be. It could just be. I don't want to get uh, strip mine locked with the with, by the crucible deck next to me. Uh... And with Eureka. Why is you Eureka? Eureka's uh, Eureka's in the future here, but uh, I'm sure I'm sure that's just supposed to be now. The future is now. Patchwork Automaton, a Modern Horizons 2 uh, Draft All-Star, or Comic Neo Draft All-Star, rather. Interesting. Yeah, I did not play this set at all. Uh, but no, that seems fantastic in this deck. Yeah, whenever you cast an artifact spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on Patchwork Automaton. It's got Ward 2, which is uh, really obnoxious in the, limited, the, the Neo Limited format, let me tell you. I... Hated it when my opponent would be like, turn two patchwork automaton. I just think, well, I gotta deal with this. Eureka, Eureka. We don't We don't have a ton of things to Eureka in this list, do we? We have the Emrakul. That's kinda it, right? I guess we have 
Nissa. We can Eureka in Nissa. Did Eureka hit lands as well? Let's pull up Eureka. I think it's just permanence in your hand. Yeah. There we yeah. go. Thank you. Thank you, Vintage oh. Masters, for not making me parse the original text of Eureka. I don't think it's, like, the best play in the world, but you can definitely Eureka in a strip mine lock with us. The strip mine fast oh, yeah. bond crucible. Oh, yeah, you can just... Um, but, like, they've also kind of dumped their entire hand at that point, which doesn't feel great. That's true, yeah. But you, you, you can turn one that with the, the Lotus, right? Yep. Arcbound Worker coming in for Mason. We could see the uh, the the one one Life Link Arcbound Cat as well. Oh, nice. Gristlebrand. Okay, now we're picking up the sneak and show goodies along with the Eureka. The nice thing about Eureka, you can get some real mind games going with Eureka, where you you do something like Eureka, put in. Uh, Risen Reef, and then you kind of go back and forth putting your dumb little things, yep. and then you pass and then your opponent drops their big thing, and then you drop in Phyrexian Metamorph afterwards because oh. Eureka, you can, you, you can still have a chance after that they don't pass. You can get the spots where you still have three cards in your hand and you pass and then they have to decide whether they're okay with the board as it lives right now or whether they want to uh, risk putting out their big fatty when you have clones in your deck. This this is what the Metamorph is for. It's for Eureka. I think so. This is great. I think it seems great to me. That's kind of like uh, a little more of the old school uh, thing where that used to happen, where you had the legend rule, and you could just like legend rule in their thing with a clone yeah. after Eureka. Gloom. Yeah. Oh, that's a great gloom. Oh my gosh, gloom. Let's pull up gloom now. Steven. I thought it was a grief at first, but this is great. We we haven't seen a grief we've at all, right? We've seen solitude right. and fury and endurance. No subtlety, but that's pretty normal. But no grief. Subtlety, real, I think, is playable, but not not needed, right? Yeah, real real could pick up grief here though, if 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 desired. Yeah, Stephen cannot be happy about this this no. gloom being no. picked. Here comes here comes this newer drafter and the, oh no they know the deep color hosers oh no that one I may have mentioned yesterday I'm not gonna I, lie I thought maybe that it, but I mean maybe they also it's are one of my pet about. cards yeah I know you I know you love gloom I can I can see your your stamp on there deep analysis is great with all this discard oh yeah it's a fantastic pickup here just uh the old the old two mana three life divination out of the yard. Always love to yes. see it. It's really nice yeah, to see. I, I want to see what Master Plum's what Master Plum's main deck looks like because there's yeah. a lot of cards here that are main deckable. Definitely, and, and and a lot of these cards, right? To 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 Plum's credit, they did start picking up some of these sideboard cards: Sudden Edict, Blue Amount, Blue Elemental Blast, Opposition <laughs> Agent, Energy Flux. But then we've got we we've returned to the main deck now. We may be overestimating the number of main deck cards that Plum has just because they've picked up quite a few lands. Ottawara, Takanu. Yeah, there's like six back. lands. Underground River. Two fetches. Oh, seven. And seven grade. if you include the Mox. Yeah. Which I think you do. Yep. Yeah, I think uh, I think Plum actually has quite a good handle on their their main deck here. I, I think I think we're pretty much. Oh, you've got to be happy about this one, Clearwater Pathway. I know you love these. I mean, given that is Clearwater. God, these are so dumb names. Uh, is Clearwater the one that is the Underground River? Clearwater, okay, Clearwater, Dark yeah. Water. Yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah. Um, like Plum has enough other lands that the Tainted Land isn't probably playable. Um, you probably don't. The the filter has already been used, or no? The filter is still a the filter is the one I would push. Still out there, I, I would I would agree with the filter here, especially because we're trying to cast counterspell and um and the uh, mana drain in this deck. I think the filter is actually quite good here. Exactly, and, and I mean two plums credit. There's no there's no double black spell, so it's not like that's a necessity. Right. Um, but yeah, to, to being able to support demonic tutor and also mana drain is hard. Plum has wisely not dipped into the uh, the uh, the hymn to Turok zone in this deck, though. I think that's a, a, a that would be too much, most likely. A Johnny Vengeant from Steven. Wow. 
Speaking of pet cards, yeah. <laughs> well. Oh, Bane of Progress is a good pickup. Oh, oh, sorry, Johnny. We're we'll we'll be back. We'll, we'll talk about you in a minute. Bane of Progress is here. Uh, Craving Tarpet already gone. Sorry, Plum. Who uh, is that Plum art? Has... Ew. Yeah, this is the this is the Commander Collection green art, not the classic uh, Commander whatever number art. But uh, yeah, this will destroy yeah. all the artifacts and enchantments and uh, become very large in the process. Uh, it does take out your oath when it shows up, but uh, hopefully it's big enough and has destroyed your whole opponent's whole board enough that that's not a problem. Yeah, th this is obviously a sideboard card against Mason, plus yeah. others probably. But Counter Squall. Counter -squall. I like that. We've already it's in the gate that, uh, yeah, it, it takes out, deals some damage though. Yeah, just it just bonks them for two, and sometimes when you're, uh, <gasps> you know, it's great when you're discarding cards. Chains of Mephistopheles, and it's also obligatory that you misspell it when you to put it out there. Of course. Oh yeah. Never, never mind that I no scoped it in the search box. No big deal. Doesn't matter. Not impressive at all. <laughs> um. <laughs> I think you and I are probably uh, there's probably like five of us uh, that could that could pull that one off in the world is what I mean. <laughs> I think Stephen. I think Stephen could also spell Mephistopheles. I'll I'll, I'll give that one I agree. to him. Um, but uh, but yeah, this but that's this, not fair because he's an academic. So that's that's true. Yeah, <laughs> that's, uh, too much overlap. Yeah, the uh, yeah, common common doesn't mind discarding a card instead of drawing a card. That's probably fine, and. Uh, well, losing that so frantic bad. search can't feel good though. Ooh, yeah, that's that's a that's a rough one. He drawn crab for Sam. After you get the first crab, you might as well pick up the second one. Just uh, you know, turn turn one, turn one, uh, black lotus land, Eureka. That's three cards. Fast bond, crucible, strip mine. Crap. <laughs> Seven. We did it. <laughs> I love those. Is, is this frantic search for Brandon? Is that just to get the Echo of Aeons on? Or like card acceleration? I'm trying to, I guess it's good with Mentor. I guess there's a lot of like subtle synergies, but yeah. not, not like a, a two card combo. Yeah, no, there's, there's no, there's no like, oh my gosh, this frantic search is going to break this card in Brandon's deck. It's just like, it's, it's pretty good. It's, it's some extra. Yeah. Some extra filtering. Brandon's got the Emery. He can cast some stuff out of the yard. Um, that's really the only way he has to interact with his own graveyard. Other than the Echo, which he can pitch. Yeah, this is just like a, a, a nice value frantic search. Absolutely. Yeah, Brandon has like this whole Breacher plus a Jar. Plus, there's so many good, so many good little like plays back and forth in his deck. I like it a lot. It's it's really sweet. God, the Gideon, I like that Gideon pickup. I think that's very good. That's just going to generate a, a steady stream of threats for Brandon. And uh, I think that once Monastery Mentor is going, Brandon will be the first to tell you that the the glorious Anthem emblem is seriously underrated. That makes sense. So this time walk for Common and pick one. That's an interesting interesting one over a Mock Sapphire. Yeah, I think that the time walk, uh, the time walk was in the Moxfield list uh, that he sent me, and I yeah. think the the time walk is really just about maximizing the value of these like these these turn over turn synergies, right? You're you're extracting value from cards like Conspiracy Theorist and Containment Construct, little by little, turn after turn, and being able to take an extra turn and just push that engine into the next gear, I think is really powerful. It's just a question of whether the early acceleration is stronger. And uh, I don't know the answer. Exactly. This Iron Apprentice is a card I definitely don't know. Yeah, this is a, uh, this is a solid fake modular card for, uh, for Mason uh -huh. here. This is a functional reprint of Arcbond Worker, right? Anything it's else? A... Oh, any creature. It can go to any creature. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Arcbound Worker uh, plus. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's an Arcbound worker that doesn't technically have modular, but can go to can go to some other card that probably is in this deck. I don't know. I don't see any, but yeah, 
no, it's it's just it's just another worker in this deck, and that's fine. Yeah. Uh, Sam picking up Titania to go with that Zurin Orb. I really like this Power Depot, and I wonder if that means Mirrodin's Core is coming at some point. Oh yeah, Probably Power not. Depot. Yes, that's that's a good point. Hyphenated uh, Iron Apprentice a little worse with the boss. Oh yep, true. But uh, yeah, Power Depot here, another a, a modular artifact land. So another another thing that Mason can can hurl into the garbage, uh, the, the garbage disposal that is Arcbound Ravager, and just really go off. Definitely is sad to not have that skull clamp though. Getting oh, that sniped yeah. in pick nine must he must have been outraged. I bet I bet Mason was uh was having a lot of feelings at home today about yeah. that, that skull clamp. But uh, I mean the... I would I'd have loved to listen to that in chat. And just see <laughs> if he could restrain himself from giving away the plan at that moment. Oh yeah. Oh oh we we missed out on some some good good content there. Some some high quality entertainment. Supreme Verdict for Brandon. Guttural response for real. Ooh. I like that. This is a good is that only hit up. instance? Yeah. Yeah, only blue instance. So it's a uh, counter target, counter spell. Pretty much, pretty much largely. Though you can, you can. You hit know, it's also issue. great. Seed time. Seed time would have been great right yeah, there. Yeah, I would love some seed time. I think, uh, I think Master Plum would be pretty peeved about a seed time. I think. Uh, yeah. That would be very funny. Mostly plum, though. I guess Talon's got some blue instance. I mean, Flash Breeze is uh, not horrible against real. Yeah, that's that's fair. That's fair. Common probably brings in uh, Flash Freeze, but doesn't have a ton of... Yeah, so it has a Spell Snare. Spell Snare is pretty good. Yeah. I don't know. You're right, though. Like, Malevolent Hermit. Like, a lot of the stuff's on board. Yeah. What? It's just if they played a... I guess it's just if they played a blue spell this turn, right? So it's... it's it, and, and and Seed Time itself being in this... It's, it's, it's still... It still gets Talon. It gets Master Plum. It, it gets Common a little bit. It gets Sam a little... And yeah, Sam it does have to be on your turn. Yes, that's true. It's only on your turn. That's... Mm, yeah. Right. It makes it hard for it against Talon. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably, probably less worth it. Fiery Temper for Common, yet another Lightning Bolt. Damnation for Plum. We're all looking for ways to deal with uh, a wide board from Steven here or from Mason. This is a very late miscalc. Late. Although I guess kind of with all the functional reprints of it. like We haven't seen Lose Focus yet either, and that's been very popular recently. Ooh, Elspeth Knight Errant. That's a cool one. Yeah, Elspeth Knight Errant just just uh, joining the four man Planeswalker squad with Corn and his own. <laughs> oh, Steven. Of course Steven, he did. Steven. Everyone's favorite Reach Haste creature. You know, those abilities, two two abilities that, that, that go extremely well together. Everyone loves it. Somehow. He's an archer. Get it? Yeah. A human archer rogue. Gotta have all the types. Yeah. Gotta have every type. Oh, da, da, you. gonna ban this person. Do, do, do. Why can't I? Why is it making it hard? No, I don't want to pop the chat out. Stop making this hard for me. It's a first time person. That makes it really exciting. I know. So hype. Refresh the chat. Uh, I just banned it. We're Thank good. you. Bye. I don't know why it was taking me so long. You had to click on their name, apparently. It's very exciting. I did that. Anyway. I didn't do what they want. I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Anul, nice pickup. I expect Steven to take Armageddon at some point. Am I wrong about that? I would like to see Steven take Armageddon uh, with these four mana planeswalkers. I think Geddon is a, uh, a great choice because Steven can just continue to generate value on board. Mm-hmm. I forgot a null was in Kaldheim. I just only ever yeah, see the old art in my head from Saga or whatever. Yeah, there's there's been a bunch of annuls, and a lot of them have really good art. This is one that I think is one of the weaker ones. 
Like, it doesn't look like an artifact or enchantment, and it looks defensive, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Yeah, it just looks like they're countering Volcanic Hammer. Literally Volcanic Hammer. And I know... <laughs> yes! I know this is not that. I know this is the hammer on the side of the... of... of... Hangry the Fire God, or whatever that card's name is. I can't remember the name of that card, so... Today. <laughs> like the Theros one, I think is good, pretty good art. Yeah, yeah, there's there's better there's better in all's kitchen. <laughs> all right, the mad we've entered the madness zone with kitchen imp here. I thought it was kitchen finks when you said that. What is kitchen imp? Oh, it's a uh, oh, okay. two, two flyer for literally the madness for, zone. For madness zone, we're, we're, we're... and real picks up seed time. There we go. There it is. Nice. And Brandon immediately drafts a blue yeah. instant. Dovin's veto. Get it in here. Price of progress, but but what you be paying? I, I'm selling on my favorite annul. My favorite annul artwork is the Mirrodin artwork. Ooh. Settle it. I gotta look at the Mirrodin artwork for annul now. It has the orb breaking into uh, oh, rings. Yes. Very pretty. Yes, that's a good one. I'm just yeah, so Seeker, I agree with you. I think Kitchen Finks is very good. I, I think maybe Real could have taken it over Thrag Tusk. I don't know which one's better. I think it's like a very good argument. Um, but Kitchen Finks is very good. It's yeah. again, once you take Kitchen Finks, why don't you take Recurring Nightmare? Why Let me introduce you to that Nightmare? card. If you're if you're <laughs> gonna if you're if you're gonna do that, why not take Nightmare Breeding uh, the Birthing Pod? Why not why not do some mm -hmm. get weird with it? Workshop in thirty eighth. Unearth Finks is good too. Mishra's Workshop. True. Usually in round eleven. Today in round thirty eight, we have Mishra's Workshop. How do you feel about that? Is that is that a, a massive? I think miss? it's fine. Yeah. No, I I think that like to, in order to support Workshop, you need to be in that deck, and I don't know who else would be in this deck. I think I think Mason read this one right. I agree. I, I think I think Workshop goes very early because it's so powerful in the right deck. But if there is more than one deck at the table that wants Misha's Workshop, something has gone terribly wrong for both of those players. I think that you've been in that spot a few times. <laughs> Who can say? Who can say? <laughs> yeah, here's here's the Arcbound, uh, whatever, the cat. Shikari, yeah. Price of Progress is a card that I think is pretty weak oh. in VRD. But should be in modern. It would be very good in modern. This isn't even the card I I thought it was. This is this isn't the one one. This is uh this is the the two two that puts a plus one plus one counter on each of your other artifact creatures. Arc about Shakira. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of like a fast uh, deal overseer. Pretty yeah. cool. And I know Mason values that. Tony silence. Yeah, get him. We've already got Brandon already has the oof. How about Stony Cells? Oh, I'm sorry, Real. Wasteland Wasteland went about an hour and a half ago. You can't have that. That's not that's not allowed. Real's gonna have to pick up a different hate card here. I like I, I, I like that uh Real is being disciplined enough to just pick up sideboard cards at this point. We don't need to overfill our main deck. Let's just grab some sideboard cards and uh and shore up our percentages in, in these various matchups. Totally. I'm also, literally looking at the, the list that made, that uh, that Real is working off of right now because he never removed me from access to it. Right. Uh, nice. And yeah, I'm seeing a couple of choices that could come through here. But I'm interested to oh, see if Reaper. we do at some point get that actual uh, Witherbloom Apprentice because we still are waiting on that. I know. I, I think that probably Sedgemore Witch filled that slot and he's not going to take both of them, but... I could be wrong. I, if I were in that spot, I would want both of them in my deck. But I, I think there's there's an argument that. Yeah. But uh, we we may not have enough uh, Magecraft triggering cards to to play value Sedgemore Witch and feel good about it. And uh, three mana, two three menace is not not the kind of card I'm super hyped to play. I agree. Is Flame Blitz another bad madness card? No, it is a cycling card that, uh, that blows up Bl Brandon's Planeswalkers real good. So every turn it hits every walker? At the beginning of your end step, you, you five every walker. 
This card is insane. How yeah. have we not seen this card in every draft? Because uh, there's not always a deck with a high enough density of Planeswalkers that people think it's necessary, or people don't know about it. What yeah, fair enough. I, I, I'm in the second camp for sure. I love this card. It's a sweet I've never card. seen it before. It's a sweet, sweet card. Um, I'm a big fan of it. Drown in the Lock for Master Plum. Well, I'm, I know this card's going straight into one of my commander decks just so I can play Steven and feel good about myself. Yeah! Just, uh, just drop it in off Dr here. Drown in the Lock is a good one. Relic for Talon. We've already seen Soul Guide Lantern this draft for Master Plum, so Relic is here. We're running out of uh, good graveyard hate artifacts. There's the Lion. There's still quite a few. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, good. I guess there's, Speaking of good graveyard hate artifacts. There's Crypt. There's Cage. If you really want a Cage. Laelia, yes! Great one. I think Cage is very good, especially given there's an Oath player at the table. That's true. Cage is, Cage is going to be very strong against Talon. Lelia, just, just a fantastic card. Puts puts down a lot of damage, gets you some extra card nice. advantage. Really strong. Dress Down is a card that I'm always like, yeah, this card seems fine, and I never know who to sideboard it against. Just it's too complicated of a card for me. It's a very complicated card. It's 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 hard to know what it does at any given time, and sometimes it just doesn't do anything and just cycles for two, and that's not really what you want. But uh can help you survive a if hit. If I flash in a dress bosses. down. Let, let's say that I flash in dress down in response oh, no. to an arc bond worker. Is that arc bond worker gonna have a good time or not? Does it stop modular, basically? I would have to look at the... Uh, it enters with. Right. The... But with the rules change that affected cards like Blood Moon, that right. where, they, where as they're entering, they enter as the thing. They, 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 we, we, see, we see the card. It sees the card as it enters. Ooh, this is exciting. A Thieving Skydiver, I think, is like a very average card at this point, but like it's it's good to get in round 40. Ashiac Dream Render feels like a very late yeah, one. Yeah, this is I a like nice late uh, uh, Ashiac Dream Render. Yes, I did mean Ashiac. Crypt is uh, Brandon picking it up. Yep. Memory Lapse. And Memory Lapse is also pretty late. Uh, modular. I would, I would have to do a... See, yes, Seeker yeah. seems to think that it does still come in, but it doesn't uh, die. But yeah, again, this is, this is a hard question. I would I would have to... I, I, I know there was that change that affected how cards like Blood Moon affect things that are entering the battlefield as they enter the battlefield. Um, so I think my, my, my gut says Arcbound Worker is going to have a bad time. But I would have to go so look in the comp rules, and that is not a stream friendly activity. <laughs> no. This Un unlicensed horse. Yes, yes, somebody took it. I was I was talking to you on stream last time about this. Yeah. And I, I wanted to play it. Uh I chickened out and took uh Graph Digger's Cage because somebody else took oath. But yeah, this is a card I think is great. I like the hearse. I think this card is fantastic. It does a great job of just uh, just deleting the good cards from somebody's graveyard. Because really, if you can get two cards out of their graveyard, usually that's all the good stuff. There's not usually too many amazing cards in there. The only downside of the hearse is sometimes on Magic Online, you click on it and hit crew it by accident when there's when you haven't oh, no. exiled anything. That's the only Don't downside. Do <laughs> if you hit the wrong ability. Yeah, that's the danger of Magic Online. I've uh, I, I remember watching so many opponents and and you know, at least once doing it myself, going, "All right, I'm going to sacrifice my Mog Fanatic." Uh oh, I'm lagging. I got to keep clicking my Mog Fanatic. <laughs> oh no, I've sacrificed Mog Fanatic, targeting Mog Fanatic. What have I done? <laughs> yes, that's where like you click it and nothing happens. And you just restart the program because you're too scared of what could happen. Oh yeah, no, the answer <laughs> or the answer, change phases or something. The answer is always to restart the program rather than to like. Yeah. <laughs> Just keep clicking your card. It will it will not go well for you. Although there is that confirmation box now that's like, are you sure? Do you, yeah. do you really want to blow up your own? I like this destiny life? spinner. 
Destiny Spinner is great here. Like, Foundry Inspector is kind of just like, oh yeah, that's table stakes, but Destiny yep. Spinner is very good. Venser goes very well with the Caracas Brandon picked up quite a while ago. That's yeah, a, and late. Yeah, late Venser for sure. Uh, you want to put odds on whether we see a Riptide Lab coming out this turn? Ooh. I think... I don't think Brandon is... I'm, I'm about to say something that's going to sound very stupid. But I started saying it, and I think I believe it. I don't think Brandon's going to go that deep. Wow. Yeah. I See, think... but the nice thing about Riptide Lab is it taps four colors. So... Yeah. Seems useful. <laughs> Desolate Lighthouse! Oh yes! man, that's great. Yes! Oh, this was one of my favorite cards in this list. Has it's such a bad picked? card, but yeah. No, I it's never been not. picked! I played this card in Standard and it was very bad then. Oh yeah, no, I played the Loot House in Standard also. It was not good. But, you know, if... if when When you get right down... To the same times that you would be activating a card like Castle Lockthwain, Desolate Lighthouse yep. is Common's Castle Lockthwain. It's true. Is Common also going to be taking the uh, the new one that makes both players do it? Maybe something Nefalia something. It would be it, it would be good in the list. Yeah, there's there's the yeah the uh, the everybody draws and discards um, from Innistrad. Uh, yeah, there's yeah from the new one. There's some options. Liquid Metal Coating. Oh, I like this Witchbane Orb a lot. Oh, yeah. Ooh, no targeting me, thanks very much. Sorry, Oath of Druids. Can't target me with that. Okay, no, this is not the other one I was thinking of. There's one that also... Um, there's one that, like... Dire uh, Sanitarium. It makes... Yes, that is the one I was talking about. Well, there's also an artifact that reduces all damage to you by one, or... I forget the name of that card, but it's another uh, like four or six mana artifact that I thought Witchbane Orb was. But oh, Witchbane Orb is also good. Oh, yeah. Um, Spheres of something from Origin. Yeah, it's the yeah. It reduces the damage you take, and it gives you hexproof, I believe, as well. Yeah, there's something like that. There's also the thing that. Uh, hmm. Yeah, there's there's a few artifacts in that in that vein. Aether Gust here for Master Plum. I like that a lot. I think Aether Gust is a fantastic sideboard card. Um, not yeah. not sure what I prefer between Aether Gust and Flash Freeze. F Flash Freeze, frankly. There we go. That was a hard sentence to say. Uh, yeah, I mean, it depends on whether you're playing against Fair Decks or Unfair Decks. Like, Flash Freeze is better against the Unfair Decks because you don't lose the game. Yep. But Aether Gust is just much more, like, you can draw it at an 8-point yeah, and being the, able to get rid of their questing beast is very nice on the second turn. And yeah, in worst case scenario, Aether Gust does still interact with cards on the stack if you need it to. It's just uh it's just not quite as good because the opponent gets to decide where it goes. Angie's Ravager, yes, now we're drafting the meat of this deck in the forties nice. here. That's solid, I like that. Let me pull Also real showing that you don't need to fight over mana if you're in a two mana two color deck. Again, proving my point that three color decks are not draftable in this format. <laughs> Obviously, everyone here agrees with me. Yeah, especially especially Common, who drafted what was it the the best uh, the best mana for the, the best mana base we've ever seen? seen. Yeah, yeah. Why can't I scroll down? Uh, uh, you currently have uh, OBS highlighted. There's a yeah, green box on the screen. Oh, thank you. Um, could yeah. you? Um. Well, no. It's just that. Oh, add more enough, lines. Uh, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Rows at the bottom. Thank you. There you go. Now we can see the end of the draft. Look at that. Ristic study. Oh, Brandon just wants to make people mad. That's funny. I don't. I don't know. If Brandon's it's ever mother and tide next. Yeah. Ooh, this is the flip Nissa, right? That is the flip Nissa. Very cool. Uh, I assume she makes that one. She makes her friend on the backside. Yeah, she. Now makes, that we can uh, see it through this, the the elemental, Ashaya or mm -hmm. whatever. Ashaya, the Awoken World, I believe. Ooh, look at you, Tezzer, right. agent of Bolas. That's that's a hot pick. That's great. Look at this. 
the signal it's signal pass artifact two equally po powerful cards i can't wait to see mason activate the ultimate on tesseract agent of bolas and say why don't you take uh i don't know eight eight thousand that sounds that i haven't done the math but i think it's eight thousand <laughs> Steven needs to take Incinerian Bridge now. Yeah. <laughs> like, now, now. Yeah, it's uh, it's time. It's time to take Incinerian Bridge. You've been floating it for, I don't know, the entire draft. Because, <laughs> like, I mean, Common wants it too, right? Like, Yeah. It seems very, very good in that list. I think it's very likely that Common tries to pick up Incinerian Bridge. I, uh, the... I will say the first thing I did with my brain upon waking up today was send that message to the channel saying draft spicy decks. I got up early for you. And then I got a message from common was like, Hey, do you want, do you want to see my list? <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> I, the first thing I put my brain on was that, which means I remember some of it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Helen picking up those artifact lands for the tinker is very good. I, I don't know if he's going to take the tap one, but you could easily see that happening. Yeah, I mean, well, he's, he's still got uh, Great Furnace to take, potentially, if he, if he wants to grab the uh, the red. Flamekin Harbinger! It's time for elemental tutoring. It's really happening with these, these elementals here. This is kind of a wild deck. Like, there's... Despite kind of being an elemental deck and having tons of elemental synergies, there's only like five cards that say elemental on them in her deck, right? There's yeah. lots of cards that make elementals. But That's wild. I don't think I guess the, getting uh, Brushfire Elemental by its own is good enough. I don't think the Young Pyromancer is going to make the cut. I think Young Pyromancer may uh may 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 not arrive. Yeah, I agree. Bloom, Blooming Marsh, just blatant disrespect for Land of Our Wastes here. Reels going to be excommunicated from the Bandline Council. Yeah. I like seeing Disenchant. That's, that's nice to see that card can still see play. Disenchant, it's nice to see. We haven't seen Fragmentize yet this draft. I've been on, on the on the lookout for Fragmentize. I don't think Steven's picked it up. Um, Steven right. Also... Like you, you sometimes still see Disenchant over it when, when things like Omniscience get drafted. But yeah, right. in this draft, there's not really much reason I can see. Uh, I mean, Lattice. Alan's monsters, lattice. Sure, that's fair. Yeah. Lattice, worm coil. I guess doesn't really interact with um, blight steel. Um, we could still hmm. see abolish. We could still see fragmentize. Thought monitor. If you're if you're disenchanting a thought monitor, you're not having a great day. But yeah. sometimes. No, but uh, sometimes that's what you got to do. It, it, I still have hope that casts will come out. We'll see casts at some point here. Ooh. Rakdos, Rakdos Headliner. Is... Okay, what does this card do? This is a 3, it probably three says madness with on it. Echo, discard a card for 2 mana, and it's got haste. I... If that card didn't say echo, discard a card, you wouldn't play it. Right. Accurate. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, maybe you still would. Is a three? It, it, I, let me roll that yeah. back. Yes, you would. You would be a three, a two mana three three haste. <laughs> but like, there's there's that Rakdos for a one one that when it hits them it grows, right? Like that guy seems oh, so good by um, comparison. The, the skeleton, the skeleton man. What's yeah. that name? What's skeleton? What and is, like, sorry, forty third pick East mystical Flint? dispute just happened. Oh, yeah, we forgot about that one. How about that? <laughs> nice pickup, Master Plum. Well done. Absolutely. Beast within talent. It's Dread, Dread Horde, Dread Horde something. Nope, that's not it. It's the other Dread Horde thing. Dread Horde Butcher is the name of the card. Uh, the, the, yeah. the Mind Sensor's a good one. Ooh, even mind sense are getting picked up. Drop of honey. That's Sick. Oh, really, that's a great one. Really good. Cause you know In this draft in particular, that's very good. You know who's not gonna have the creature with the least power? I'll give you a hint. <laughs> True. 
it, it's it's definitely a way to get your oath online. <laughs> yeah. Oh I'm yeah. Both beginning to upkeep triggers. Sorry, vents are vents are not available at this time. Brandon's got that one. I'm gonna pull up my list of counter spells and see if we've missed any others. Lose focus is still uh, out. Yeah. That's the. I think that's the best one left. Arcane denial goes twenty second. Mm, Arcane denial. I don't, I don't think it should. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it should go. It should uh, oh, go. Juari disruption. Juari disruption should have been taken. That's I, don't, I think that card is from the land and draft it. Yeah. Yeah, I think Juari suspend also is is good. Yeah, suspend is a fantastic, uh, just delaying tactic. It's better than regular delay, I think. Um, by virtue of being one mana. But uh, yeah, Jawari Disruption. Very underdrafted. There's no Basalt Monolith out, right? No, just I know it's not as good, but... Just yep. Grim, no, nobody's trying to do power artifact nonsense. Nobody's nobody's on the weird Zerda plan. Mm -hmm. I miss my Zerda plan deck. That was the most fun deck I've drafted in this format. <laughs> It was incredibly cool. It was so cool and so fragile. But when, I mean, it it won incredibly fast. It yeah. Won on turn one, like every time. When it won, it won on turn. Alms of the vein. Okay. Let's look up more cards that no one's ever heard of. Alms of the vein. It is a madness okay. helix to the dome. All right, all right. What's the uh, what's the is it? There's this, this very similar card that uh, does flashback, right? Bump in the that's, night. That gets played in the bazaar. Yeah, bump in the night. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, that's a that's a popular Wait. popper card. No, no, no. What, what's the uh, what's the one that goes with, works with bazaar? Oh, um. I think it has to come off your library into your graveyard, so it wouldn't be good in this creeping, deck. But that's not enough. Creeping chill. Yeah. Treachery. Treachery. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Nice Blightsteel Colossus. It would be a real shame if I controlled it. Now, wouldn't it? <laughs> and also, I got to do more things like this turn, because that's reasonable. I like this Tainted Wood pickup. Um, given that, given that, like, he got both on, over, or Overgrown Tomb and Bayou, yeah. and not any fetches, and Blooming Marsh, is, there's, like, a couple cards, but not very many that aren't going to be turned on. He might not have to play any Forests. Might not have to play Llanowar Wastes. Grumble, grumble, grumble. <laughs> no, I think that's a good I think pickup. Tainted Wood is better than Llanowar Wastes if in this deck. I think I agree that Tainted Wood is the correct pick in a vacuum. If you're not receiving, uh, for, you know, a monthly allowance from the from the Painland Council, then you should pick Tainted Wood. But uh, some of us are contractually bound... Crater Hoof Behemoth for Sam, another great place to put that 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 extra mana. Just uh, I'll just cast Crater Hoof and kill you, I guess. Why not? Seems fine. Crater Hoof has haste, but doesn't give other stuff haste. Is that right? Does not give haste. Uh, simply has it. Okay. Gives, so gives Eureka. It yeah, Eureka is like good with it still, but not broken. Yeah, not busted. Uh, if you play the Crater Hoof, if you put the Crater Hoof and a bunch of things on the battlefield. Uh, or a bunch of things, and then the Crater Hoof uh, on the battlefield. I guess it doesn't matter the order, because you're still resolving Eureka. Uh, you, you do get to hit mm -hmm. him for a bunch with the Crater Hoof, but that's about it. Yeah, Titania into a Crater Hoof eventually, though. Oh, Oof, yeah. Feels very strong. You know, you know what card, I like this you know, Titania deck a lot. You know what card would make that uh, interaction even stronger? Zurin Orb. You're right. <laughs> this this might be a deck where Zoran Orb is actually playable. I think I'm yeah. willing to concede. That's why that that's, I, I am wrong. That's why I mentioned Titania earlier. I was like, see, this is the card that that makes Zoran Orb because I don't I don't know if you've you've seen the interactions between Titania and uh, and Zoran Orb just in that draft in in MH two in that draft format. But yeah. like, if you no, get assemble, you just win the game. It's uh it's hard to lose from there. So the background here for me is that. I play five color lands in ADH and like everything you imagine. Uh, and Zurnorb was like my favorite card in the deck for a long time, but eventually I decided it didn't make the cut anymore. And it still is the picture on tapped out. Uh, it's I deeply love that card, and I'm just grumpy that I don't get to play it anymore. Oh yeah, yeah, and I'm sure people yeah. ask you like once every other match, like, "Hey, you playing Zurnorb in your deck?" 
Are you playing Zuranor? You should play Zuranor. I was, now. and then I feel sad. Yeah. I used to. I, I would like to put Zuranor back in, but those 25 slots of non-lands are very hard to fill. So. Mason, uh, Mason putting those two coins into his pocket and picking up a copy of Dispatch here, along with Ancient Den. Little. <laughs> there's, there's the final round. There's there's one for there there's a joke for no one. Uh, Ancient Den, you know, sort of uh, the best available option remaining for Mason. No no uh, seat of the synod at this point. And uh, it's we're we're entering the meme zone a little bit. We'll see if uh, we'll see if we yep. get some good forty six pick memes. Or if everybody just stays disciplined and actually used all their uses all their picks. Ho 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 ho! That's elementals for you. Omnath Locus of the that Wild sure has, is. has never been drafted. Who is this? Who who is this man, Brandon? Who has he become? He's drafted he's just drafted natural state. A very reasonable and measured sideboard card. You know what card goes really great with Tainted Wood? Land of our wastes. <laughs> yeah, those cards are not friends. <laughs> They're not, but it's yeah, probably still worth it. I, I, I think this is... I, I would I would draft both of these cards here. I, ju I would just draft Tainted Wood before Land of our wastes. Because it's correct. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> the thing I read that just happened here is that Real ran out of sideboard cards. Yeah. Uh, and it's just like, alright, I'm going to have the best mana base in the world for my two-color deck. You know what? That's honestly not a bad thing. Like, no it is in the same way that it is possible to overdraft your main deck it is actually possible to overdraft your sideboard you just end up with like these niche cards that you either a never board in or b you overboard both of those things are bad and yep. if you can just make your mana base better your win percentage just ticks up by like 0.2 percent sure but that's better than the zero percent from a sideboard card you'll never play totally I, I would still know. like to see a Wither Bloom Apprentice. Like yeah. that's that's the last card that I'm just like really should be here. Disciple of Deceit. Okay. Interesting. Let's all read Disciple of Deceit together. Whenever Disciple of Deceit becomes untapped, you may discard a non-land card. If you do, search your library for a card with the same converted mana cost as that card. Reveal it, put it <laughs> into your hand, and shuffle your life. Wow! What? All right. So so let's let's talk about the play pattern here. You play yeah. Disciple of Deceit on turn uh -huh. two. Yep. Then turn three, you attack with it. Yep. Then turn four, uh -huh. you get to transmute a card. You untap. And you transmute into something. In, in You discard your squeak. <laughs> and you go get <laughs> Deck Faden. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> this is like a whole lot of work to cast Demonic Tutor. <laughs> Master, Master Plum has their list of sideboard cards and just keeps going down it and, and keeps getting bad news, which I understand. Yeah. I definitely had a pick that I, I made in the last async where I was like, I was like in an airport or something and it was my turn. I was like, all right, I got to pick before I get on this plane so everybody's not waiting for me for three hours. And I picked and I got on the plane and I got off the plane. It was like, no, Eric, that's already been picked. So I was like, Ian, I was like at baggage claim and I was like, uh, you know, scroll my list on my phone. I'll take this one. And then I, you know, get my bag. You know, I, I get in the lift. I go to my hotel. I get to my hotel. I look at my phone. No messages. I go out to get food. And while I'm at the restaurant, I get a message like, no, nah, Eric, that's already been picked. You got to try again. I'm like, really? I spent the entire day yes. not making this pick. Seeker, Seeker makes a good point, which is that Disciple would have been very good at the Springleaf draw. Yes, yes. So, one thing, I just noticed Talon is about to take Apostle's Blessing. Mm -hmm. I think that's fine. I would yeah. so much rather see Not of This World, though, right? Like, I, the only card that doesn't protect its Gristle Brand. And, um, Worm Wait, Quail, is right? that even in the list? I, uh, true, Worm Quail, but who, who's actually taking care of that Worm Quail in a way that Apostle's Blessing cares about? Yeah, nobody. Um, like, Steven, Steven is with one card? Right. Yeah, I would uh, I would absolutely pick up Not of This World here. It, it, it does protect the, the, the Gristle Brand, right? Seven, seven power. What, it doesn't have to be colorless? I thought uh, it was only colorless cards. Yeah, you're right. 
No, it turns out that anything really big is is not from this. If, if you're too big, Good to know. you're not from this world. You're from a different world. There are a lot of green Good to know. Parts, also, apparently. <laughs> Good to know Gristlebrand is in Sam's deck, not in Talon's. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Still. Our point still stands. I think there are a lot of green cards that would sort of take umbrage with this this uh, this definition. Defense grid and brought back. Wow. What is that card? Okay, I want to note, no ensnaring bridge. Ensnaring bridge, not appearing in this film. That's a little rough. But here's brought back. Instead of ensnaring bridge, we have two permanent guards in my graveyard that were put there from the battlefield this turn. Let's return them to the battlefield tapped. So... This is Wrath My Board Eggs? I I'm confused. I don't... I don't know what this is for. Oh! Today. No, no, it's Fury. It's Fury and Solitude. Oh! That's sweet. That is sweet. Yeah! This is, uh... I mean... Then wouldn't you just play... No, this is... This is Turn 1, Planes, Mox Pearl, uh, Flash in... Uh, it's flashing solid or flashing. Uh, nope, none of this work. Sorry, I was trying to figure out a way to make it. Ephemerate's still out there. Ephemerate's still out there. <laughs> All right, I, I don't have. I mean, engineered explosives. It gets back for back. zero. I don't know. This feels like a. I'm gonna try cool stuff. This is a meme. This is. A, this is. A, I want to try this pick. This is a Steven. Steven. Steven science. Uh, fact or fiction yeah. for talent. Tainted indulgence. We'll draw two, discard one. It's the last round. We have to search every card. Yeah. Uh, common opponent just change. Uh, okay, so they're not really drafting Whip or Will. I'll show you the card they're really drafting. Currency converter. Tainted indulgence is fine. Oh no no master plot. Yeah, no, I'm not saying master Tainted indulgence is bad. It's a it's it's a fine card. But I'm just saying master common opponent is not actually drafting Whip or Will, a a flightless bird. Um, <laughs> common opponent is drafting currency converter. Uh, whenever you discard a card, you may exile that card from your graveyard. You can pay two and tap it to loot. And uh, then you can tap to put a card exiled with it into your graveyard. If it was a land, you get a treasure. If it wasn't a land, you get a rogue. A 2-2 two -two rogue. All right. I guess. I mean, the, the second part of that ability is the thing you want, right? You want to be able to draw on the discard? Yeah, I mean, you, you like the looting. The rest of it's okay. The rest of it's fine. Witherbloom Apprentice yeah. finally picked up for real. Good good use of the 46th good. pick. I like that. Same. Because nobody else wants it. Nobody else cares. Sunday Canyon, yes, also comes back with the brought back. 46th pick! I think it's Wrath Insurance, though. Eh, regrowth's bad. Is it? Is it this bad? Is it 46th no. pick bad? But it's just... It doesn't have a ton of synergy with most decks, right? Like it's kind of like every deck will find it to be okay or good, yeah. but it's never it's never like the all star in your deck. No, it's never amazing, but it's just, and it, it, it it misses the draft half the time. But yeah, I like no. it. I, mean, I, th I think it's gonna be very good in Brandon's deck. I just yeah. don't think it's like a, yeah. I'm not blown away by it. No, but look at look at all out of Brandon. I expect I expect better. None of these cards are uh, Riptide Laboratory. Not That's true. No, I'm, I'm obviously joking. Yeah. Brandon, I also don't know if Riptide. I don't think Brandon's actually going to play this Reality Smasher, so we'll see. But I don't. I don't think. Brandon no, Brand, Brandon's list is sweet though. I, I have no Brandon's idea what the final four are going to be. I think Brandon's actually going to be very good. I'm going to look at his deck and be like, ah, this is the version of this deck that I should have drafted. Scape shift. Whoa. Just uh, just a quick uh, end the game with my crabs maneuver. Put all well. these lands in the graveyard, put them back into play with fast bond. You know, normal stuff. And the final pick of the draft, Mason gets the ultimate meme. Whoa! That's good. That's Arayo's very good. Very good here. So Arayo, of course, once you once the fourth turn spell of a turn is played, you flip it. And when it flips, it becomes counter the first spell played by each opponent each turn. Really strong card. I and, remember I mean, you can Arayo, cast that turn one. I remember Arayo Affinity. I played Arayo Affinity. That deck was sweet. Mason just drafted Arayo so, Affinity. So, yeah, you, dra you play two zero drops. 
play yeah. Tolarian Academy, tap it for two mana, play a Ryo, and then play another zero drop. Yeah. And you have her turn flip on turn one. Yeah, and you're just like, hey, hey, what's up? Uh, have fun. Good luck ever casting anything. That doesn't work with any other land, though, right? There's, he has had, this is mostly turn two. I guess Mox Opal could make it happen, too. Yeah. But I mean, land even, on, Opal. even on turn two, like if you flip Ryo on turn two, you did it. True, but do do you hold back your zero, your, all your low cost with you have a Ryo in your head? Yeah, probably. A hundred percent. You 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 yeah. You yeah. uh, at least for a turn. Like sometimes your mm -hmm. hand just doesn't get there, and you're like, I have to I have to just barf my hand out, and and this Ryo is now not a card, and that's fine. And sometimes you you stumble, you whiff. You just play the Arayo as a 1-1 flyer, and then later you draw a glimpse of nature and you get lucky. But mm -hmm. most Or yeah, you, you yeah. draw your Ancestral and then just win. Right. right? You cast Ancestral, yeah. draw three zero drops. <laughs> just like, eh, here's a bunch of garbage. <laughs> I feel That's... like Ancestral Vision could have been okay in this list. Like, I'm not saying it's wrong, but it could have been no, interesting. I think, I think it could have been very good. Mason, what did you do? You drafted a Ryo affinity. I'm, I'm sure Mason's going to go 5-2 with this list. I'm calling it right now. 5-2? That's it? I don't know. Sandbagging our boy. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I just know that whatever deck you give to Mason, he will end up with a 5-something record or above. Yes. Right? So, oh, yeah. I this is, I think, a more wild deck than I, than I would trust him to pull a 7-0 with. <laughs> I'm giving Mason 6-1. I'm giving Mason a 6-1. Okay. That's my... That's I my hope card. you are right, because I want this deck to be good. I think this deck is sweet. The, yeah. I, I'm going to go check on my wife, though. Cool. But this, this has been an amazing time. Thank you, Eric, for hanging out with me. Thanks, Mark, and thanks, everybody, for showing up, especially thanks to the drafters. Uh, I think we are out for now. Uh, if you, hang on one sec, before everybody goes though, if you're not in the Discord and you're interested in checking out this format, come on down, play your first VRD or just hang out and watch. Uh, we've got a lot of great people willing to help you out if you do want to play in one of our VRDs. And thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you next time. Uh, we our we next also have draft is 54, uh, 54 days. Yeah. August 13th, our next live draft. It's going to be sweet. Cool. See y'all. Bye, everybody.